Yo, yo, it's your bro, yo, Elliot here, back with another episode of The Elliot Hull Show. And today, we're going to be talking about prolonged fasting. I think it's appropriate because uh, right now, some of our Muslim friends are practicing Ramadan. And uh, so fasting as a health and fitness practice has been catching on in the mainstream. People are using fasting for body, body recomposition and for health and healing. But fasting has been around for thousands of years. So it's interesting to me that we're only paying attention to it now, maybe the past 10 years or so. But as you know, Jesus fasted for 40 days. The ancient Greeks fasted. The Egyptians fasted. And like I said today, our friends, uh, our Muslim friends are fasting for Ramadan. In fact, I began fasting for the first time in 2002 when I was introduced to the Baha'i faith. And I had just come across the Baha'i community and within within a week <laughs> they were like well hey Elliot we're starting our fasting season which means for 19 days we're going to fast that means from sun up to sundown we dry fast so you know you break fast at night at night almost like Ramadan but for 19 days you're dry fasting from sun up to sundown and my very first experience with fasting was revolutionary it revolutionized my body and revolutionized my mind. I was astonished at the transformation that happened in me uh, during that time. I had been a football player in high school and college, always swole, always big, always jacked, always drinking protein shakes and eating chicken breast all day long. And I had never skipped a meal, <laughs> if you will, until that time. And so the, the shift in my body composition and then, of course, the metaphysical gains that we're going to be talking a little bit about here in a moment, uh, the shift in my mindset. I'm going to talk to you briefly about uh, how fasting not only changes your body, but can change your mind and put you in greater contact, in touch, sensitivity to the divine speaking through you. And so, like I said, my very first experience with, with, with prolonged fasting and fasting in general was 2002. But then in around 2007, 2008, I came out with my very first ebook, which was the Lean Hybrid Muscle Program. And I included one day of fasting in there. And people were freaking the fuck out because back then, you know, we didn't know as much as we know about fasting as we do now. But I had learned about this one day of fasting or this... Uh, eat, stop, eat method, if you're, if I'm going to reference uh, Brad Pilon. Actually, I heard it first by studying the work of Ori Hoffmeckler, and he called it the warrior diet. So you can look up those two resources, eat, stop, eat by Brad Pilon, as well as the warrior diet by Ori Hoffmeckler. But back in 2007, it wasn't really a uh, mainstream thing yet, but I included it in the program uh, because I knew that it was going to get people incredible results, body transformation results. And... A few years later, when my YouTube videos started to become very popular, uh, I, I implemented fasting once again for myself, two days a week, and that was when I was, I was really lean back in like 2013, 2014, and, uh, and because I knew just how powerful fasting was. So I was using it for, not for religious or spiritual or metaphysical gains at the time, I was doing it for straight up vanity for looking good, because I knew I was going to be taking my shirt off on these videos. And so that's, that's my brief experience of fasting personally. Um, today we have a guest who is a proponent of prolonged fasting. He says that fat people should just stop eating. And not this OMAD stop eating where you're having one meal a day. More like NOMAD, I like to call it, where it's no meal a day. And this is uh, the way he recommends you do it. And the way I've been practicing it for the past six months is to take multiple days in a row. No food. Uh, you can throw in some dry fast there. But the whole idea is to drink what he calls snake juice. Actually, I got a little bit of snake juice right here. Uh, in fact, I like what he calls snake juice is, uh, you know, putting some sea salt and some potassium, magnesium in the water. I had been doing that for a little while because I like the way it tastes. In fact, I learned about the benefit of having electrolytes in your water from Paul Check uh, back around 2002. And, uh, and so I just like the way it tastes. I can't drink just uh, straight up water any longer. I drink snake juice, according to our, according to our guest. So 
Briefly, let's talk about the physical gains that are associated with fasting, particularly prolonged fasting. I'll go really quickly through these. Uh, number one, there, have, there has been in recent days a lot of studies about the ketogenic diet. And people are healing themselves, healing themselves of all kinds of chronic disease. What I like to say, overconsumption diseases. Uh, by using a ketogenic diet. And this is basically where your body stops relying on glucose for energy and starts relying on fat for energy. And, uh, and in particular, what they call ketones, right? So when our body breaks down uh, adipose tissue, it, uh, it turns into a few different things, including fatty acids and, and what they call ketones. And ketones seem to uh, replace glucose as energy. And by not having the glucose glycogen uh, as our main energy source, insulin is reduced, inflammation is reduced. Uh, I know people who've healed themselves from cancer by going on a ketogenic diet. Well, when you fast, as opposed to ketogenic diet where you know you're eating a whole lot of fat and stuff, uh, and it, it could take you up to 10 to 14 days to get into ketosis with a ketogenic diet. With fasting, you get the benefits of ketosis Within 48 hours, I mean, two days of fasting, bang, you're in ketogenic, you're in ketosis. Uh, in fact, my guest says that fasting is the real ketogenic diet. And, uh, and one of the, I watch a lot of his videos, and one of the things he says is uh, that, you know, our ancestors weren't just walking around stuffing, stuffing themselves with ribeyes. They weren't eating ribeyes all day long like a lot of the carnivore and ketogenic people are doing. They just didn't have access to all of the, the gluttony the glutton of food that we have in our society today. So they were in ketosis quite a bit because they were fasting. So that's one of the great benefits of fasting. If you're privy to the benefits of ketosis, being in a ketogenic diet, you ought to know that fasting really is the true ketogenic diet. Uh, other benefits of prolonged fasting include autophagy, which is a new term. It's, it's basically a new term, but for me, it's a, it's a new term as well. Uh, this is... This is where your body goes into a state of rejuvenation. Your body begins to literally break down and get rid of old, uh, decrepit, useless, stagnant cells, and then is reborn. You know, it it it, it speeds up. Now I'm just I'm just kind of like trying to remember from my biology class, but it 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 may speed up this process of cell mitosis. Is that the term? where your cells, you know, rebuild themselves, you know? So the faster we can do this, break down and build up, the newer, the more rejuvenated, the younger we become. And it is, uh, it is clear, we do know, that many of our chronic diseases are a result of overconsumption. Overconsumption creates a state where we never go into this rejuvenative process of autophagy. And this is why uh, not only do we have obesity as an e epidemic, but we also have cancer as an epidemic. And, uh, and of course, I mentioned ketosis as a means for healing cancer, but many people are healing cancer with fasting. Now, I don't know if the FDA, RDA, whatever government institutional organization tells me what I'm about allowed to say or not allowed to say is going to agree with that. But I'm basing it on the documentaries I've watched, the experts that I've studied, and, uh, and it seems pretty, pretty amazing to at least consider. I'm not making any assertions. Uh, so those are two of the, of, the, of the most incredible physiological benefits of fasting. You're gonna break down fat faster than ever before. You're gonna lose fat faster than ever before. And while you're burning fat in this ketogenic state with insulin low, your body also goes into a muscle sparing state. Believe this, believe this. This is, this is scientific stuff. This is not me just making it up. You can do your own research. I'm not one of those guys who's gonna give you all the uh, footnotes down at the bottom. You can do your own research and see if what I'm saying is true or not. But uh, according to what I've read and what I've seen, they say that your body increases growth hormone as a result of the fasting state. And this makes perfect sense to me because our body is not stupid. If there's no food, your body's not going to break down the mechanism by which you're going to go get food, which is your muscles, right? So you don't have food, but you've got body fat. This is, this is how dumb 
some of our dogma is. Starvation mode from fasting has people for the myth has been that your body's going to stop burning fat because you're fasting. It's going to store fat and it's going to break down muscle. I believed this for a long time. I thought it was true. I lived my life based on it. But it didn't make much sense and I didn't question it. Now that science has shown us a different way and uh, in, a, in a way that makes sense to me, uh, I understand that your body wants to preserve muscle. Your body doesn't want to get rid of muscle when you're not eating. Your body, your body wants to use up the stored energy, your body fat for energy, the stored energy, not the, the mechanical means by which you go and, and get food. So that's another physical benefit, physiological benefit, increase in growth hormone. And we know that growth hormone, they call like the, the youth hormone. So you've got autophagy, you've got youth hormones, you've got ketogenic, keto, ketosis, you got fat burning, body composition. Man, it's like magic. And the funny thing about this magic is that uh, you don't have to take anything. You don't have to do anything. It is a stoppage. It is a refraining from. And that's what makes it so simple uh, and also makes it free. You don't need to go buy stuff. Uh, in fact, when you begin implementing fasting or using a fasting-focused lifestyle, like my guest calls it, you, uh, you're, you're spending a whole lot less on food. And so it has been incredible. So um, many of you know that I have been, uh, since November, have been doing various stints of prolonged fasting. In uh, March, I did 10 days of fasting. And a part of the reason why I decided to start going into fasting again in this prolonged way during this new season in my life was mainly to heal myself of some of the, some of the they say, autoimmune inflammation type issues that I was dealing with, uh, namely rashes on my skin. And so uh, as I was doing some research to, to learn how fasting may help heal skin, I came across our guest website and his, uh, his YouTube channel. Briefly, let's talk quickly about the, uh, the metaphysical gains of fasting, because uh, as we know, like I mentioned before, Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert, tempted by Satan. Now, what the hell does that all mean? Well, you won't know unless you fast. I got to tell you, when you discipline yourself to refrain from consumption, you're going to be attacked by demons from all side. Of course, I call it demon, but, you know, these are these are. This is old psychological conditioning and trauma that has you believe that you need to eat or feel sorry for yourself uh, based you know, on feelings alone. Most people eat uh, as an emotional crutch and as a, um, uh, 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 based on wrong thinking, wrong science, wrong ideas. And so uh, when you do participate in this practice of prolonged fasting, you're going to be attacked from all sides. Your mind is going to play tricks on you. And your emotions are going to play tricks on you. And I'm referring to those as demons. And so when you go into this state, you literally are doing battle with your inner beta, your inner weaknesses, those weak, frail parts of yourself, weak mindset. I also believe that this is why fasting is a, is a warrior's practice. It really is because it requires that type of discipline to say no to Satan when he's tempting you with bread and power, right? Like Jesus. Me personally, some of the metaphysical gains that I experience from prolonged fasting come in the form of humility. I've got a pretty strong ego, you know, it's part of who I am, and, you know, what I'm about. Uh, and so when the body isn't fed, the ego takes a break because there's no energy to, to support all the neurotic behaviors and thinking, all the superficial neurotic behaviors and thinking things that uh that are on the surface and you really are 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 allowed to sink deep into your soul and experience the humility thereof and that's really what it was for me humility when i talk about the metaphysical gains of fasting for me the greatest benefit thus far has been humility uh knowing that i'm weak and that i need help uh, it was during my 10-day prolonged fast that I began praying again. And, uh, and I came across 
the ideas of Eastern Orthodox Christianity and the use of the Jesus prayer, asking for mercy. Because when you, when you go through some of these prolonged fasts and you're being tempted by the devil, you've got to ask for mercy. You've got to ask for help because the ego can't do it. I'm a willful guy. Will, ego, like I told you before. Ah, I make shit happen. Uh, when the weakness sets in from multiple days of fasting, at least for me, I find it very beneficial to relinquish all will and instead rely on the grace of God to get me through. And if you're looking for that type of transcendent, transcendent experience, also if you're looking for direction and clarity in your life, you got to get the ego out of the way. The ego tricks us uh, in a myriad of different ways. And by fasting, I found that the ego just has to take a back seat. It just has to sit down and shut the fuck up. And so that's what I did. I spent a lot of time just sitting down and shutting the fuck up. So uh, just to continue before I go into my intentions for this show, my future intentions with fasting as an athlete and a coach. Uh, number one, I will be doing quarterly prolonged fast. That means 10 days or so every quarter. In July, I'll be doing a 14-day fasting challenge. I'll be, uh, I'll be talking about that on my YouTube channels. And I will be inviting you to join along with me. And uh, another one of my intentions professionally is to use this as a means to help my clients and to help my customers uh, get a grip on rational fasting and building fasting into their lifestyle so that it is something that you're doing every week, uh, every month or every quarter, depending on your goals. So right now, every week, I'll throw in one to one to two uh, nomads, you know, after doing the six months of uh, extended fasting, prolonged fasting. Uh, I, I got down to 168 pounds, down from two, 240 something at my heaviest. Uh, and then to integrate it into a lifestyle, I use, uh, you know, a couple, you know, OMADs and OBADs throughout the week. But our guest is, uh, is an expert in this. I love the way he designs fasting programs. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that with him. So as an athlete and as a coach, those are my intentions. My intention for this show is, number one, to dispel any myths about prolonged fasting. Uh, number two, discover the real benefits of prolonged fasting. We're going to talk, our, to talk with our guest about that. And then uh, as our guest describes it as a fasting-focused lifestyle, we're going to talk about how to integrate the fasting-focused lifestyle for general health and performance and body recomposition uh, with our guests. And so without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Cole Robinson, the snake diet wizard. And welcome back to the show. I've got my guest here, Cole Robinson, the snake diet wizard. And I got some great questions for, for Cole. Cole, thank you for joining us here today, brother. You're welcome, buddy. I'm glad to be on your show. Yeah, man. It was fun chatting with you for a few minutes before we uh, got started here. But I want to I wanna jump in and start with this. You believe that fat people should simply stop eating for days and days on end in order to lose weight. How did you come to that conclusion? So at the very start, when I started fasting, I didn't know anything about fasting. Okay. In fact, a few years back before I even started, like when people were doing Ramadan, like when Muslims are doing Ramadan, I thought that was actually hardcore. And then what happened, I'm a fitness trainer. I used to be a fitness trainer. I kind of gave it up. But I had one girl that I was training, and she was a fucking food addict. And I just got sick and tired of it. You know, I got sick and tired of training people. And, you you know, you put your heart and soul into getting results. But then the one thing that's not fucking fixed is a goddamn food addiction, right? So this one girl, I challenged her to a 24-hour fast. And I didn't know if fasting was healthy or not. I didn't care. I didn't give a shit if it was healthy. I knew 24 hours wasn't going to kill her because I've had that, you know, for surgeries and stuff before having uh, anesthetic, anesthetics or whatever, right? And uh, I, because I'm your fearless leader, right, I did yeah. a 36-hour fast. So I basically just went two nights without food. And that's when it all started. She did the 24, and then I went to 36, and 36 hours was actually enough to kick me into ketosis. So... We can get into that a little more later. But basically, if you fast long enough, this isn't a ketogenic diet. You're actually forcing ketosis because you're dumping all the sugar out of your liver, essentially all the liver glycogen, and your body's got to shift. It has no choice. It's got to start burning body fat for fuel. 
and you use the ketone bodies for energy. So when I did this first fast, I didn't know anything, but I felt it in the morning. It was, I think I started fasting on a Friday night and then I woke up Sunday morning, uh, Saturday night, I was going through withdrawals, like just, you know, sugar withdrawals like anybody else. And then I woke up Sunday morning when I finally got to sleep and I felt like a million bucks, everything was brighter. And that, I would have been in ketosis. I didn't even know it. Right. I didn't even know anything about ketosis. So then at that point, like I'm a pig, I, I was encouraged to eat huge meals my whole life since I was a little kid, which I think that should be every, every parent should be pushing their kid to eat big meals and fasting long, not this fucking six meal a day bullshit because it builds stomach capacity, which most people don't got now. So anyway, I started eating one meal a day and I was eating just a big breakfast. And so, as things went, I think I, I was about, you know, I just keep pushing myself, right? I'm like, how cool is this? I'm eating one big meal a day now and I'm losing weight like crazy. And I haven't done anything. I just pretty much took two big meals and squashed it into one meal. And then I was losing weight. And then I'm like, well, let's take it a little farther. Let's try doing a 48 hour fast. And so that went good. So I did a 48 and like with training, because you know, I'm all about performance. I'm not, I talk about this. I'm not some hippie faster. Yeah. Off the internet. Just, you know, I'm, it's a performance thing. If, if I was, if I could maintain a, a strong lean body doing this, I wouldn't be doing it. Right. I want to still be strong. I, I, I'm all about body composition and, you know, having a good strength to weight ratio. And so I did a 48 hour fast that was on water, plain water. Now, this is before I got into the salts. And then the next one I did was a 72-hour fast. And that one was when I got taxed. At about 72 hours, I went to the gym, did some deadlifts, and I was light, like I was lightheaded, like I had to take a five-minute breather between every set. And then I have an old mentor that's actually been helping me with training for years. And he used to be an old school bodybuilder, you know, drug-free bodybuilder. And we were talking about salts and shit. And I got into reading about the cell you know, cell metabolism and like potassium and sodium and all this other shit. And then I added salts in the two main, the two main salts, sodium and potassium. And then at that point, I'm like, well, let's try a hardcore fast. And I did eight days. So after I did three days on the fresh water and got taxed, see some fat people, they could go on the fresh water for days on end, like not days on end, but longer than I went because of the exercise it taxed me. So some people be, some people might say, Oh, they fasted on fresh water for how many ever days? That's because they weren't doing fuck all. They were sitting on their ass. Right. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be able to fast and go do shit. So eventually you'll get taxed on those electrolytes, no matter what, especially just hammering fresh water because you're just pissing out the electrolytes. Like it actually dehydrates you after a while. So I started knocking this salt back and I went eight days work training every day now i didn't do any cardio but i went into the gym and just you know did full body you know your, your basic compounds no grinders no failure and i made it eight days and i lost i think it was something around 16 pounds like it worked <laughs> out to about two pounds a day and that is the that is when i knew i was on to something and i lost no strength like i got a little taxed by the end of the of the eight days but as soon as i refed bang it was like just I lost nothing. I just looked ripped and I was still like, if I lost any strength at all, I might've lost like 5%, you know, it was like nothing. And that's how it started. And then I started, you know, at, right off the bat, my very first um, transformation pictures I put up, like, that's the thing. People got to have balls to post their pictures or else no one's going to see the result. And I lost 20 pounds that first month combined with like meal a day, 72s, 48s. And uh, that long fast was actually after that first month, mm -hmm. but I put the before and afters up and then people are like, holy shit. And they're just like, you know, crappy before and afters, like the old phone selfie in the mirror, you know, not like a douchebag kind of fucking like position, but the same every time, just the phone right. and people started messaging me. And that was when I originally was just coaching people with a meal a day routine. But then once I did that eight day fast on salt water, shit, I had people getting a hold of me when I did that fast. And they were, and I had fat people going 12 days, 20 days, 30 days, like just unbelievable. And like, not just losing weight, but beating everything. Like, you know, type two diabetics, like having them off their meds the first 48 hours, because as soon as you start fasting, um, your body, the blood sugar will clear, right? So like a type two diabetic has chronically high blood sugar and they're always on their blood sugar lowering meds and if they're really lucky the fucking idiot doctors have put them on insulin so they're just completely getting fucked <laughs> and so I'll, I'll get them off all that stuff 
and their blood sugar will clear and then it'll get nice and low where it should be and then they just fast and that gives their liver a chance to heal and, and actually corrects insulin insulin resistance right because they're now they're running on ketones but there's a phase there about 20, 48 hours usually for most people to get into it but i've had some type 2 diabetics that have such high blood sugar that it took like three to four days to get the sugar down low enough to force ketosis like wow. i've seen everything man i've i've dealt with type ones like type one diabetics i've had them you know cut down from 30 units of insulin down to like a half like a half a unit in a day just eating a meal a day you know keeping it nice and flat all day so they're not just always eating right so right. and uh yeah, so that's how it started. And then basically once I knew with my own body, because I always experiment first. And, you know, I never push nothing on anybody that I haven't done myself. And yeah. if I can do it at a lean body mass, a fat, a fat ass can do it like nothing. You know, like yeah. I've done the hardest fast I ever did was the first somewhat long dry fast I did. I was 168 pounds. I was probably right around you know, that eight, 9% body fat mark at, at 168. And I dry fasted for five days hard, like, so no water mm -hmm. contact at all. So if anybody's watching, listening to that, so a hard dry fast is no water contact. Okay. It does make a difference for sure when you have showers because your body will soak up some fluid. But I went five days and that was like on day five of the morning of day five. And I went to refeed, like I could hardly walk up the stairs. Like that was a hardcore <laughs> fast. Like I might, I had heart palpitations. Like you wouldn't believe like the night on the fourth night, I'm like, does this, is this what death feels like? <laughs> like I'm laying there and my heart was like, you know, pounding, but I was wired on cortisol. Right. Because I'm like down at like 158 pounds. Like I'm just looking like, like I'm wasting away. Like I got like fucking, you know, like two weeks to live with cancer or some shit. <laughs> and and I'm, I trusted it though, because, there was like, I'm all about anecdotal stories. Okay. I don't listen to like no research, no fucking papers are going to change my fucking mind to doing a dry <laughs> fast. When I have, you know, when you go read the stories, like you got to dig for them, obviously, but when you go read the stories and they're genuine, you know what I'm saying? They're genuine stories. I'm like, fuck, I'm trying it. And then you get the result when you've actually done something, when you've actually had the balls to try something, then you read the science that backs up your result you got. And that's where a lot of shit's fucked up with the system because no one has the balls to try anything. And if you want, you can go find a million studies that say dry fasting is bad for you. You know, you can go find a million studies that say something's good or bad both ways. And if, if your confirmation bias and your little fucking fear is going to stop you from doing it, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. So my experimentation is what I have. You know, I'm not the smartest guy on the planet. I'm not the fucking, you know, I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to nutrition, but I experiment hardcore harder than probably most anybody. And that's why that's the only way you're going to find the fucking truth. Right. I love that. And I totally admire that about you, bro. One of the things that's really fascinating is taking a look at all the uh, before and after pictures on your website <laughs> and on the, uh, <laughs> Man, it's, it's mind-blowing how quickly these people are going from obese to lean on your website <laughs> yeah. and in your Instagram, man. So what, in order to get that kind of transformation through fasting, what do you recommend? You know, I'm talking about obese people because those are the biggest transformations. What do you recommend they do? So um, one thing for sure is consistency. So what I usually do if I'm coaching somebody, it's just, now, there's so many different fasting routines you can run on somebody. But let's say the average fat fucking female in the United States that's doing nothing. Like the average fat woman that is completely sedentary. What I would do with her is I would have her the very first fast. I would basically get her to do 72 hours minimum. Okay, so gun to your head, 72 hours. You're not going to die. Okay. <laughs> And then if she feels good at 72, 96 hours. If she feels good at 96, 120 hours. And so on and so forth until that first fast just finally taxes her. So right off the bat, I make them take pictures. I don't help anybody that hasn't taken pictures because that's the slap in the face they need right off the bat or else they won't even fucking – they won't – they'll just quit. Okay? So I make them strip down, 
down there butt naked, take pictures, put them up on my snake diet motivation group in front of like 200,000 members, right? And then they, then it's like they don't want to be that person anymore because they just face this huge fear of judgment, okay? Just this massive embarrassment. Like, I've destroyed my fucking body my whole, my whole life. Like, I need to change. This is disgusting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so then, I, then the next step, once they take the pictures, the next step is just breaking their fear of fasting. So that's what I do with that first 72 hours, which is long enough to force ketosis almost every time, but I'll go longer. And if they feel taxed, you know, like really getting taxed where the sleep gets really shitty, but a lot of times the sleep might be bad at the start, just going through like addictions as well. But um, if they start to have issues, then we'll break the fast. And then at that point, I'll get them to do some sort of a, a routine that's consistent to like actually get in check because a lot of times what happens is people fucking yo-yo like i've had women fast you know 12 days 20 days and then they just come off the fast and fuck it all up so that's <laughs> why you know that's why i love people that actually could do one meal a day strict for like say a prolonged period of time because those people are very easy to coach because if they've been doing one meal a day strict strict meaning actually watching calorie count and not overeating i can take that person and bust them through a longer fast and once they beat that fear of fasting, it's very easy for them to stick to like a 72 hour regimen. And then you're just melting fat like fucking crazy. And then usually I'll get them to, if they're really fat and sedentary, I'll just have me like 500 calorie refeeds on 72 hours. And if they're fat, obviously I will cut carbs, right? Like I, I don't promote a ketogenic diet like long term, but I will use like carnivore and keto macros and shit like this as therapeutical diets short term. But I won't ever promote like long term a ketogenic diet, which is essentially, you know, like twenty five percent protein and basically fat. Like it's it's unnecessary. So I'll cut them on on some sort of a protocol sometimes like that where it's super low carb, five hundred cal refeeds, seventy two hours minimum, and then they'll just melt. And then once they get leaner, then we might go to forty eights on the seventy two hour fast get hard. And then once they get too hard on the 48s the, like those are too hard to even accomplish and you're down to eating a meal a day simple and then obviously they drink the snake juice like the snake juice for anyone that wants to know what it is it's just a, like in the start of the story it's just the salt water you know we actually i actually have a buddy that we finally made packets packeted snake juice which i didn't even want to do in the first place because i i was helping people like everything was just free right but Jesus, fuck, people are begging you to sell them something. And I'm like, and then I told, tell them, like, if you don't want to buy the fucking packet of snakes, you just go to the fucking grocery store. I got like 20 million recipes on, on uh, my snake diet YouTube channel and just make it yourself. But a lot of people, so yeah, they can either go get, buy that snake juice off Amazon or go make it themselves right at the store. It's pennies to make, right? And then that's it. You just drink that salt water and lose all the weight. And then a lot of times once people lose all the weight, then like I push them to do cardio for sure. Like I don't want to even coach people that are lazy that don't want to exercise. So even the fat sedentary woman, I wanted to scrub out some calories like doing cardio. Right. And then, you know, I get into other things like cold showers, uh, like, you know, dry fasted saunas, which is pretty hardcore shit. <laughs> like if you want to, if you want to get some serious autophagy and uh, you know, basically increase your heat shock you got these things called heat shock proteins in your body which do all sorts of awesome health i give you awesome health benefits but like saunas are good but you got to watch if you're drinking that salt water you don't want to like sweat out too much salt so you're gonna have to get a little more salt in after but i'll do dry saunas like where i'll go dry and i'll be fairly dry like you know a good 20 hours dry and then i'll sit in the sauna for like two hours and you can <laughs> feel it it's a it, it, well you're, when you're in that deep state of ketosis Plus you're dry fasted, your body is gets to a situation where it it needs to break down body fat just to get that metabolic water to hydrate you. Yeah. So if you if you're dry and you go sit in that sauna, but like you want to keep the intensity down in the sauna. So you'd want to sit like at the bottom of the sauna. You know, you don't want to be too hot. You just want to keep it as long as you can, but not too hot. Got and it. you will burn some serious body fat when you do that. Like your heart rate will go up. Mine will get up a good, maybe, you know, as much as 50 points over resting just from sitting there in the heat. And so you're, it's almost like basically simulating lazy steady state cardio and you're on the fast. So you're just roasting body fat.
<laughs> One of my <laughs> clients just gave me a, a sauna. I've been using it in my backyard. I just got it a couple of days ago. And uh, I'm going to have to give that a try, man. Is it electric or is it a real one? Uh, I got to plug it in. It's okay. infra infrared. Yeah, they, yeah, they work. Like any, any of those saunas. Now, the infrared sauna, um, unless I'm mistaken, like I've used an electric sauna before in the past that like was, you know, it was heat. Yeah. But now that infrared sauna, it's not actually, there's not actually, like it works a little bit different almost like on, like with, like with waves basically, right? So hmm, it's, I'm not it's, sure. Yeah, well, I think because I haven't, if, unless it's the same thing as what I used in the past, I haven't used one of those exactly. But yeah, I just use the old school one and, you know, I go to the rec center where I live here and I just sit in there fucking in the bathhouse with all these old Chinamen and fucking... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, they're all these old Chinese guys are always in there. And fucking, we just sit there and bullshit. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I love the fact that you. I love the fact that you're an athlete too. You know, because I, when I started the prolonged fast, I was trying to find different guys just to get their their take on it. And you're yeah. right. A lot of them are are hippies. And the fact yeah. that you lift, the fact that you're a power lifter, the fact that you're a jack dude and you're fasting to me that it clicked instantly like i resonated with you right away Thanks, so when man. someone's a uh, someone's an athlete uh and you know they want they want to lose muscle they want to maintain their performance how do you change the fasting for that yeah so there's a little there's different routines there so now it depends if it's, it depends what their priority is right if they're like if they're a really fat guy and they're trying to cut weight I feel one of the best protocols, I still always make them do that longer fast at the start, okay? To face that, like, you know, I still make them do the 72 hours and then I just won't mm -hmm. make them lift that three days, okay? But a good routine for the athletes that are, especially um, intense athletes, like we're talking sprinters, uh, people that lift weights, you know, anything that's high intensity, um, usually what I have been doing is breakfast only. I've actually been really pushing this again. Now I went away from eating at night. I've done a whole bunch of research now on circadian rhythms and shit. And, and with my own experience, I had to go back to a morning leaf feeding routine because I was doing 48s recently. And then I realized what the fuck am I doing eating at night? And it just felt better. And that's exactly what I was doing when I started fasting was eating breakfast in the morning. So essentially that's what I have them do. They need a breakfast and watch the calorie count. And depending how tight they want to get with the calories, they need it a little closer to their workout. So I actually have a fella right now, like my same mentor, that was one thing. Like he's done everything, and he's cutting for Worlds right now. He's actually in the Masters division in Worlds. He's, I think, I think uh, he's 47 now. And he was cutting. We were basically – normally you would cut on, like, a meal a day and eat strict zero carb, and then you might have, like, this – this carb loading refeed on like say Sunday, but that was not optimal. You just, you can, you can cut for sure and keep most of your strength, but it's not as good as eating breakfast and eating carbs every day. And then you, because it's all about the intensity in the gym, because as soon as you eat that little bit of carb intensity in the gym is what counts. People don't understand that you do not need to eat a meal after you work out. You already have enough amino acids in your system and everything from that morning meal that you are in recovery right away. And I proved it the other day. I did some blood testing. I've done lots of blood testing experiments, right? And I ate a breakfast that was probably maintenance calories. And 12 hours later, my blood sugars were still like a full point higher. So if we're talking blood sugars measured in millimoles per liter, my fasted blood sugars at 12 hours would normally be probably about 4.1. And if I'm really fasted at 24 hours, like in ketosis fasted, I'd be like mid threes. And my blood sugar 12 hours after eating that meal after training was like 5.2. So you're still like, you're anabolic all day. It's unbelievable. Like soon as you eat them, you always, it's always better to front load your food. You're anabolic all day long. And then all you do is you, you know, drink some salt water, go to bed on like basically an empty stomach. But you're, you're not even hungry anyway because it depends on how much you've eaten in the morning. But you go to bed on an empty stomach and you wake up. And when you, right before you wake up, about two hours before you wake up, your body temperature will actually increase and your metabolism increases and your cortisol is high when you wake up and your insulin sensitivity is at its peak. And that is exactly when you should be eating your breakfast. Exactly when you should be eating. If you're eating one meal a day on a cut, if you're an athlete, 
That's exactly when you should be eating it. And then throughout the day, your alertness and everything's excellent. And then as nighttime comes, um, melatonin will increase again. Like, so it decreases in the morning when you're about to wake up because melatonin makes you sleepy. And then it'll increase right before you go to bed. And that'll make you sleepy again before bed. And your body cools down naturally. If, if, if everything's on point, like with your circadian rhythm, most people, like if they work shift work and shit, and you know, you need light, right? You need the light patterns to be like consistent every day. So anyway, you would go to sleep, empty stomach, you know, you're burning pure body fat at night then. You're, you're not, why would you, why would you load up food at night, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's like you're dumping food on a tiny little fire when you could be dumping food on this massive fire in the morning. Because I did an analogy about this. Let's say if you had like a, a huge fire on one side of you, and on the other side, you had like this little candle burning, okay? So if you had like a, like a barrel of diesel and you dump it on the big fire, which would represent how you are in the morning, like with your metabolism being cranked in the morning, you dump that big barrel of diesel on that big fire and it's going to burn. Like you're going to burn it up. That's the calories. Like that's your food, right? Now, if you dump that big barrel of diesel on that little flame at night because your metabolism's taking a dive at night, you're going to spill diesel everywhere. That's like, that represents fat storage, right? You're not going to burn much. And yeah, when you wake up in the morning fast and you try to train the next day, you are going to burn some fat that got stashed. But the number one thing is your intensity is shit. Like in comparison, it's not even comparable. We're talking like 20% more strength if you ate a nice big breakfast compared to eating the same meal at night after you train. Like fasted training, fasted meaning like, you know, a good, 16 hours later or so on is just not optimal like if you ate a huge breakfast and you're trying to eat maintenance like say a guy like you if you were just going like every day was the same a nice big breakfast like well-rounded like you know fat protein count maybe a goat about a gram per pound of your body weight and then carbs to make up the rest of the calories and maybe you know 120 grams of fat or something it doesn't have to be perfect just eat breakfast well what'll happen is you'll your strength when you go to train will just be through the roof, through the roof compared to if you would have been eating the night before and you went into that workout fasted. So then your intensity is way down. So then on a cut, on a cut, you're never going to maintain as much muscle mass. You're not going to be even near as muscle sparing if your intensity is dropping off the face of the earth. If that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. What do you recommend for people who train in the morning? So this, So now that obviously... Training in the morning, number one, isn't optimal. If it's now, if it's, if it's performance work, like lifting, like I have a buddy who made the Olympics and I believe it was 2007 in the hundred meter. And he used to, he told me that he used to do practice at like, uh, I think it was like 9 a.m. And so they had to get up at 5 a.m., which wasn't optimal. They tried they get food in before that. So his coach told them that don't even show up for practice unless you are awake by 5 a.m. Because it takes a good four hours for your muscles to really wake up. Like you're never as strong in the morning as you are at night. So, yeah. but if, if it's absolutely now, if you're doing long distance running, it's a whole other story, right? Now, if they had to, if they absolutely had to weight train in the morning, like sumo wrestlers train in the morning. Now they're not really weight training, but it's more cardio for them like but it is explosive but they have an excuse for that i'll get into that real quick i learn a lot from sumo wrestlers even though they're fat asses i learn a lot of from, from, <laughs> wow. from shit but if somebody had to absolutely train right when they woke up then you have really no choice but to eat the evening before but if i had to make a decision when to eat the evening before i would definitely eat and give myself at least you know, at least a good four hours to digest the food before bed. Because going to bed, like at least be like in, in your day still. You know what I mean? Like be, don't be winding down and then eat. Like be like still kind of at least at the, at the tail end of the day where you're still kind of revved up. Like dinner time, basically. Mm -hmm. If you had to. Now, sumo wrestlers, their excuse is they're, they're force feeding so bad that for one, they can pull that off because they're just force feeding so much foot. Like they eat that chanko soup, right? And mm -hmm. they're force feeding so bad that they can get up in the morning and yeah, they got energy, but also they have no choice. 
because if they force fed all that food earlier in the day and then they try to do their workout at night, they just have way too much food in their system. And like, that's not going to be optimal for their training. Right. So they pretty much have to train fasted. And that's another, if somebody wants to bulk, like if you got the rare person out there that's trying to actually fatten up, that is one time where if they really want to gain weight, like fast, that's when I would train fasted the next day. I would train like maybe four hours after waking up and then use the whole rest of the day to just eat. Okay. But we're talking about weight loss. I've done that for experiments. Um, like I did an experiment where I gained like 35 pounds in like six weeks. And then I, and then I, and I did, that was the routine I was on. I actually would train fasted. I would go straight to McDonald's <laughs> after the, and I'd eat like 50 bucks worth of McDonald's. And then I'd go home and have a nap and then I'd get up and like eat a whole bunch more shit, like a bunch of dates. And like I, I gained weight quick cause I could eat a lot. And then I did a 15 day fast to show people I could lose 35 pounds in 15 <laughs> days after I gained it. <laughs> yeah. And then I, uh, yeah, and I actually did 10 days on the salt water for that fast and then five days dry and I cut 35 pounds. But there's one thing for sure, when you gain it that quick, everyone's got, everyone's got like a body fat set point. And if you're fat for a long time, when you're losing weight, you've got to like kind of crush through that plateau because your body's naturally going to try to kind of stay at that old set point. So you got to like, that's another important reason why you don't want people to yo-yo fast and gain weight back all the time because – you need to try to stay down there. You know, like you've lost quite a bit of weight, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was, when I started uh, the prolonged fasting in November, it was probably around 220. Yeah. And then uh, on April 10th, my birthday, I was uh, 168. Yeah, you look pretty good, man. Like it feels so good to be light. Like I don't care what anybody says. So, I agree. like, yeah, you know, so what I was getting at there. So I cut that weight for that body fat set point. So the longer you're at this weight you're at also, the longer you can train at that lighter weight, you will, your body will get used to it. And what'll happen is your calorie count, your maintenance calorie count will even increase. Hmm. So let's say for example, you know, does that make sense? Because your body starts to get used to being there. So going back to that body fat set point, what happened? I was gaining all that weight for that experiment i did with the 15 days to cut all that weight your body i find my body has about a 20 pound swing where i can swing about 20 pounds and feel really good so let's say when i'm really lean i'd be like maybe about 165 and then on the heavy end i'd be maybe if i got up to about 185 i'd still feel quite like really good and it's really hard for me to actually gain weight past 185 if I'm eating one meal a day. Like as much food as I can eat in a meal, it's very hard for me to actually crack 185 unless I start stretching out that eating window, right? But it's interesting when I get over 185 and I'm forcing food like that, I started to get some fucking chest pressure. Like, oh, yeah. God, oh I fucking started. I'm like, holy fuck. I don't know if I, like I got up as heavy as 206 from like a buck, like I was like a buck 70. <laughs> Six weeks later, I'm 206 and my fucking like my fucking heart i'm like fuck this ain't like I, I was gonna try to go up to 220 and i'm like i don't know if i should i might fucking drop dead of a heart attack yeah do you know what that is because i've had the same experience oh when you're gaining weight mm -hmm. yeah like i so i believe well obviously it's gonna be pressure just from getting fat yeah like there's obviously you're gonna generate some fat around your organs but one thing for sure so when you're talking about that, that swing that you have, like your body fat set point, you know, you got like this place where you swing back and forth and it's really easy to kind of swing in there. Mm -hmm. When you start to force your body to get fat at a very fast rate, when you're trying to get past that set point, like for me, it's about 185. That is exactly when your triglyceride levels will start really climbing. Mm. Your blood triglyceride levels and that is exactly what makes you like, that's the worst thing in the world. Like that's exactly what, ha how you get a fatty liver, you know, people that pound way too much fructose in their diet, mm. like, and fasting obviously counterbalances a lot of sugar very well. But even with the fasting, if you're pounding crazy amounts of fructose, your liver can only store about a hundred grams of glycogen from the fructose. So anything over and above that, if you're a pop addict or drinking all these fucking energy drinks, your blood fats are going to go through the roof. Like your blood triglycerides will go through the roof. And then, that's exactly what causes fatty liver syndrome. And that's what fucking kills you. 
you know, because your, your body can only take so much. But when you fast, it's amazing what you can get away with because you're giving your liver and all your organs a break for like 22 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So fasting is unbelievable. Like I did an experiment where I ate McDonald's for 30 days straight <laughs> for one, uh, and it was one meal a day at 11 a.m. I had a cameraman come with me and everything. And I ate basically maintenance calories. I, I dodged like all the sugary shit. I just ate pretty much the burgers. I ate those salads, which is after hindsight, was a complete fucking waste of money. Those salads, there's no potassium in them. It was just a waste of money. But I ate three double quarter pounders with cheese. And then I was making up the calorie difference with those cheap peanut butters. And I'd weigh myself, I'd weigh myself every morning. And if I was losing weight too quick, I'd crank the peanut butters up because I'd get those for free. And at the end of the month, like, don't get me wrong, this sustained for a long period of time. I guarantee I would have been low on some sort of micros eventually. Yeah. But in the month, my, my strength was, like, excellent. And my inflammation markers were, like, non-existent. Like, they could, like, C-reactive protein is one marker that people should get tested. And that was, that's, like, a blatant sign of inflammation issues. And in Canada, where I live, they don't even fucking do that blood test. Like, it's ridiculous. That's one of the numbers you should – like, blood sugar – you know, triglycerides, um, that C-reactive protein number, like those are the most important ones that you get checked. A lot of the other shit, it's like a lot of that, a lot of the other shit, if it's fucked up, it's just a symptom of a bad lifestyle, you know? Mm -hmm. Cholesterol matters to a point, but not, if you're eating lower carb and you're fasting, I've had my cholesterol so high that I scared my doctor, in fact, before, and I felt great. It's mm -hmm. kind of a bunch of bullshit. Like yeah. the cholesterol, it's like a, cholesterol is a myth. Mm -hmm. um what the real problem is is too much sugar causes inflammation which causes like small lesions in your arteries and insulin spikes all the time that's one of the worst things in the world is spiking your insulin all fucking day with small meals and then the cholesterol and the calcium come along to try to actually heal the lesion that you've created in your artery and that causes the blockage but originally it's the inflammation and the high fucking insulin levels and the high blood sugar constantly that causes the original problem right so anyway i did the mcdonald's for 30 days straight ate pretty much that whole meal in about 15 minutes every day and my blood my blood markers are perfect <laughs> and that's that i just wanted to show people how good the fasting worked and like yeah it was cheap meat from mcdonald's and it was yeah. shitty bread you know and it didn't matter like you fast and it just keeps your you know keeps your metabolism high keeps your insulin sensitivity excellent uh you know, you're not pushing sugar through your, your kid, your blood sugars are nice and low most of the day. You know, you're not, you're not overusing your kidneys. Like people get kidney disease because the blood sugars are sky high all the time. And, and they, uh, that's what destroys your kidneys because your kidneys are essentially the, um, your, your last line of defense for high blood sugar. So every single type two diabetic that has high blood sugar constantly, they piss like racehorses. Okay, I, I, I ask, it's clockwork. I'll ask them right away. How much do you urinate? All fucking day. And as soon as you start fasting and they clear that blood sugar, the body's like, okay, we don't need to urinate anymore to try to get rid of this excess blood sugar because their body's not absorbing it, right? Because their, their insulin resistance is all hell. So they're pissing off all that sugar out. And that's what destroys your kidneys. And, the, you know, it comes back to your liver and your kidneys and your gut health. If you keep those three things healthy with fasting, you know, clean food, um, you know, if you are going to eat carbs, eat them big when you do, but then fast, that's like optimal health. That's like the optimal lifestyle. And the way I live my life now, when I do the cardio, I'll go do that fasted cardio right in the morning when like I just kind of simulating, simulating that hunting situation of a hunter gatherer. Cause I believe now I was, I think a lot of people are fucked up on this too. I'll explain about the hunter gatherers. A lot of people thought that they kill an animal, eat at night, go to sleep. That's bullshit. There's no way they would have killed the animal late in the evening and then ate it and then slept for eight hours. Right. I believe, I believe what would have happened is if, did you grow up out in the country at all? Or are you from the city? I'm from Long Island. So the suburbs. Okay. Well, I grew up out in the bush, right? Wow. So yeah. So when I used to go to work, even when I was working in the patch, like I used to work in the oil and gas industry, the deer and the animals were like, thicker than thieves when we used to drive to work like i remember when i first had my first job i was actually going out to work with my dad because i was a summer student at this gas plant when i was really young 
And I'm talking like before sunup, there's so many fucking deer in the goddamn ditches. Like you had to drive like 10 miles an hour. So you didn't hit one, which <laughs> makes that right. So yeah. that dawned on me the one day, I'm like, we didn't want to fucking hunt at midday. The most animals are out in the morning. And then they would have woke up. Cortisol was cranked. They were alert. And these people would have been like professional hunters. It would have been a joke for them to go kill an animal within an hour, an hour and a half, skin the fucking thing and eat it. That's what would have really happened. That makes perfect sense. And, but people think that they would have hunted at night. It just doesn't make any sense because hunting at night would have been dangerous for one because there would have been other predators trying to steal like an open cut of meat, you know, where in the daytime makes sense. And if they ate a lot of food now, they might have had a little siesta after they ate the food. So maybe they were up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., you know, right when the sun, when there's, like, there's light, but the sun's not up. Plus, it's illegal to even hunt. Like, I got a hold of my, one of my family relatives because I couldn't remember the rules on hunting because I wanted to really dig into this. I'm like, this makes sense. And he said, you can't even hunt two hours before sunup because it's fucking illegal. Like, the Indians were doing it for years because if you can go, basically, it's like shooting fish in a fucking barrel. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and that makes sense. So, like, these hunter gab, they would have killed something early in the morning, ate the fucking animal. And it, breakfast means anywhere. It's like, you know, first half of the day, really. Like, maybe 10 a.m., 1 a.m. It, it's, it's just eating, early, like, that one meal early in the day. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's how it would have happened based on how I feel. And I lead a very, like, healthy life where my sleep, like, because I'm a YouTuber like you and I'm, like blessed that I don't have to work shift work. I have worked shift work, but everything's in check right now. You know, I get up, I was up this morning about, you know, seven and I was up a little, I'm getting actually up earlier now because I'm getting more used to sleeping on that, on that floor. But it's like, get up. I'll go do some fasted cardio. Like I'll go swim a half a mile. <clears throat> Excuse me. The voice is getting shot and yelling at fat people 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> so, but I'll get, I'll go swim about a half a mile right now. I'm getting swimming again. And then right after I swim, I will usually maybe sit in that sauna for half an hour because I like sweating like that, like there's chlorine in the water. And I think the sweat really cleans my pores out. And then I will go eat and I'll mm -hmm. eat like a big, a big meal. Now, depending what my workout later in the day is going to look like, or if I'm going to train at all, if it's weights, like it's heavy loads, I will eat carbs. If it's not, I'll cut the carbs back. And that's what my day looks like. So I'll, that's fasted cardio, eat my big meal, relax, do some other shit during the day. Later in the evening, I'll go train when I'm like, feel like absolute prime, when my stomach is settled out, the food's settled out and I'll have crazy strength and uh, I'll go home and then I'll, you know, help some people with some weight loss and shit in the evening. And then I'll go to bed. That's what your day should look like. If optimally, like everyone doesn't have that luxury, but that's what it should look like. And also when you're, when your rhythm gets back on point, your bowel movements actually should be in the morning. And this mm -hmm. is exactly what, how it was for me for like ever when I was a kid. Yeah. It was always like eat big in the morning, take a massive shit. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. and, then you're, and then you're good to go for the rest of the day. But people, like, people keep trying to reinvent the fucking wheel is the right. problem. You know, and then you get, and then diet gets to be so much like a goddamn religion. Like, fuck, it's not yeah. a fucking religion. Like, nobody wants to, like, change their ways. Like, even these carnivore people, <clears throat> like, I've experimented with strict carnivore, but I won't use that diet long term. It's, it's way too restricted in, in uh, like, the hormetic effect. Like, you know what hormesis is? Yeah, like, good stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, basically, if you cut everything, and you're just eating the meat, you're not going to get, like, yeah, there's toxins in, in fruit and vegetables, okay? There is. But that can be a good stressor, and there is value in that. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's trying to eat carnivore just because they're getting brainwashed by the fucking carnivore religion, or the same with keto trying to completely cut carbs, you're missing out on a ton of shit. Fasting is a blanket. Yeah. Everyone can fucking fast. And a lot of the problem is a lot of these people are using diet to lose weight when they just need to stop fucking eating. <laughs> like, you know, they're, they're yeah. that's how keto, that's how keto got so popular is people were losing weight on keto because naturally if you keep your body in a fat burning state all the time, you are going to burn some more body fat. But why the fuck would you eat keto when you can have natural ketosis just by not eating anything? Especially if you're that 
fat, sedentary woman. That doesn't make any sense. And then they come to me because they're plateauing on their keto bullshit. Right. Right. And I'm, that's, that's the problem because a lot of these keto people be like, well, you don't even have to count calories. Like, yeah, you got to fucking count calories. Like if you eat five packs of bacon for breakfast, trust me, you're not going to lose any fucking weight. Mm -hmm. Like there's right. actually people, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah, a lot of these, and then the carnivore guys, you got them because now I will use carnivore and people have stomach problems sometimes. And you know, I do, I have made some rotten meat. Like I got some liver in the fucking closet. That's like seven months old. Like, yeah. and even that, like how many people are eating rotten meat on the internet? There's a few guys, you yeah. know, and it's just, you know, I trust those guys. Like, yeah, they ate it and didn't fucking die. So I fucking cut some up and <laughs> got it rotten as fucking like I'm still alive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of your clients have like diseases. I watched some of your videos where you talk about guys with cancer and AIDS. How is, how does fasting help people that have those kind of problems? So I've helped a lot of people with cancer and, uh, essentially like fasting combined with obviously cutting sugar. Like that's, these are like those well known ways to kill cancer cells. Like a lot of people are just confused on what cancer even is. Yeah. Like, because the mainstream fucking medical system and doctors always have to name everything. Right. So as soon as they, as soon as they put a name on something, it's like, Oh, it's serious. You know, mm -hmm. where everybody's producing cancer cells at any given time. Like me, you are, I am, it's they're, they're mutated cells. You right. know, your stem, your stem cells will produce some fucked up cells and your immune system's strong and mine's strong, like from fasting and eating clean food, your body will just kill those fucking things. But, when you get older or if you're a child with a fucked up immune system from crazy amounts of fucking shots or, you know, immunizations or whatever, we can get into that. Fuck. I got mm -hmm. haters on that shit too. Oh yeah. But you know, if you were born fucked up for some reason, maybe your mom was a, you know, a fucking drunk or some shit, a fat drunk when she had you. And now you got autoimmune issues at birth. You know, you can get cancer, develop cancer at that point. Cause you're just, you're just weak. Okay, mm -hmm. it's just a weak immune system essentially will lead to fucking will lead to cancer buildup, I you should say, like where it starts to turn into something where you know where it actually starts to turn into a tumor. Right? And as soon as you start fasting, you starve the shit out of it. And there's others there's other protocols, like you know, uh right away you definitely want your pH high in your body. So like I'll have people pound baking soda, you know, baking soda alkalizes the living shit out of your kidneys and your whole body. Like that's one of the no one cancer uh, uh, protocols is baking soda and fucking vitamin C, like mm -hmm. high dose, vi high dose vitamin C. You can take during a fast too. That vitamin C will just kill a fucking cancer cell in like ten seconds. And people like that's where a lot of these natural paths that are actually applying, giving people high dose vitamin C. They're getting hated on like crazy in the states. And I don't want to sound like a complete conspiracy theorist, but fuck these fucking natural paths that are helping some of these people with high dose vitamin C or shit. They just pop up missing. Like, you know, you go yeah. on fucking the internet and they just, these people just they're found fucking dead, like with a, you know, a bullet hole in their fucking head. Like, what the fuck? It doesn't make any sense. You yeah, know, even that dog. worked for a guy like that uh, and he was having some big problems. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's even like Dr. Sebi, like he, he was helping people with all sorts of shit. And then he somehow, he stayed out of jail for quite a while because he had people mm -hmm. coming into the court that were actually, you know, giving testimonials, but then finally they got him in jail and then they fucking something happened to him in jail. He fucking died. And you know, yeah. he's healthy as a horse. It doesn't make any sense, but you know, so fasting, like it caused like apoptosis is when your cells will like start to commit suicide. And, and obviously that's, there's people that have actually beat cancer. Just that's when I would use a keto diet. You know, that's a therapy. The original ketogenic diet was actually, 5% protein wow. and basically straight fat. The only, it just got, it got manipulated to this 25% protein diet because all these people seen that you could lose weight, but it was really a therapeutical diet. They're using for epileptics, uh, even type one diabetics and cancer patients. And then it became this 25 for 20, 20% protein diet. You know, what's really was never, that's not a real ketogenic eating I, I i don't like saying the word diet because then people just think about the food because i promote a fasting focused lifestyle right. so let's say ketogenic macro routine so mm -hmm. you'd still be fasting but you'd be refeeding on keto macros let's say if a guy had cancer or something 
You know, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, and obviously you want to keep the sugar down because there's no doubt that can't like sh- cancer will chew on sugar. Right. And, uh, and then obviously if you want to completely just avoid cancer, you fucking fast, you flip fast your whole life and you avoid fucking sugar and you avoid stress and you quit your fucking day job that's killing you and you stop worrying about fucking money and you start sleeping on the floor on fucking yoga mats and you drive an old piece of shit car. That's like one of the biggest problems, Elliot, is just the fucking lifestyle that people have been brainwashed into buying all this fucking shit mm-hmm. to impress. If you're a man to impress women, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of, or if you're a woman, just because that's just the way women are, they consume everything, you know? Like mm-hmm. cons- the biggest consumers in North America are always women. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and that's the stress, like, because, and you, we can go, we'll probably get into this, but like, that's why I'm so, I fucking, like, I think like social media is like, we use it to the, the greater good because of what we're doing with it. But most people should not fucking be on Facebook. Right. The, the, it, it makes for a very weak community. And that's how people end up getting sick because they're stressed because they don't get any fucking friends anymore because all their friends are just like faces on the internet and they don't even talk face to face. Right. You know, like our, our communication structures fuck completely destroyed now. Like, you know, back in the day when you were young, like you'd actually go court somebody or, you know, even like my sister, like, you know, when, a, a, when she was going on a date with somebody when we were kids, like that fucking guy to come to our house and meet my dad. Like, Oh yeah. No fucking way. Like now, yeah now with the internet dating scene and all this shit they can just kind of sneak around that right and then and that's the big that like that's a filter like that's that's how you screen people is the the girls should be like you're meeting my dad Problem right is, none of young kids have any fucking dads anymore because the fucking system's so fucked that single mom uh you know the rate of single moms is just going through the roof there is no dads and that's why we got such a weak society this next generation of society is so fucking weak you know all these boys that want to be women to to impress women they're they're being women to impress women I yeah you, I put something about that oh it's <laughs> fucking <ridiculous. laughs> yeah you know? like it's just and and that's that's our society where we're fucking we're our this new group like i'm lucky enough you're maybe a little bit older than me i'm 37 40 yeah so we're I, i'm just lucky enough that i was in that time frame where i still like especially the way i grew up out in the country and shit yeah no, we were on our own. Like it's like after after we ate, it's like go play. And me and my right. buddy are going to fucking shooting guns and shit and fucking, you know, like climbing trees and like yeah. doing stuff. And now these kids are just in their house playing fucking video games and watching porn. And right. and and they're on Instagram and, and especially the men, like because of the internet. You know, the men have objectified women so bad now that it's basically sex has become just this simple addiction where the men will do almost anything like crack cocaine to get sex because yeah. it's so objectified now. Where back in the day, the sex wasn't so objectified, so the men weren't doing just anything to get it. Right. You know, it's it's fucking, un- yeah, it's unbelievable, that whole fucking story. Like, porn's got to be one of the worst things known to man. Like, I help a lot of guys, too, like what you talk about not masturbating and shit and i i've uh well because of powerlifting and stuff i knew that i was stronger i yeah. started doing that when i was 13 yep i yeah when i bought because i was watching the old rocky movies when he's like hey adrian no fucking fooling around before the fight when he's gonna fight apollo right yeah and i copied that when i was a kid and i copied like even the raw eggs like that was actually some of the best advice you could get was from these old rocky movies yeah <laughs> right yep, and uh, yeah and like that's you know so i have guys that are definitely porn addicts and shit mm-hmm. and women too fuck crazy porn addicts some of the women that get a hold of me really and uh oh it's unbelievable and it's the women though they can just keep on fucking you know they can just keep on rubbing their pussy because it ain't like a guy <laughs> where he has a nap after he fucking ejaculates. right fucking <laughs> keep going till it's raw like fuck like I had a girl told me like it was just ridiculous how much she was masturbating. It was unbelievable. And uh but yeah, so a lot of people, you know, this whole no fap thing. Right. I know you spoke about that. Like we could I got some thoughts on that where, 
you know, some of these guys are almost doing that for the wrong reason. They're hmm. like doing it to try to actually still get laid. Oh, it's okay. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, if you don't jerk off, women will find you more attractive. Like, that's the wrong reasons. Like, that's not the point. The, yeah. So when I was doing it to like be stronger yeah. and, and, and have better workouts and, and use my time more wisely and feel better and get better sleep. And so one thing that I have people do, a friend of mine that I've been mentoring for a long time, he had lots of troubles with porn and shit. And we even tried money. Like he gave me 500 bucks. And if he, and we were going 30 days, like I went 43 days one time. And, uh, but I realized it's not about going as long as you can. It's about actually treating it like fasting. Right. So with, with him, he gave me 500 bucks. First he tried once, made it like 20 some days. And then he wanted to quit doing it so much because he was just doing it too much. He gave me 500 bucks. He's like, okay, hey, you don't give me this money back if, if I don't make the 30 days. He cracked earlier. He didn't even care about the 500 bucks. He was a young kid. He didn't even have 500 bucks to spend. And I didn't give his money back either. And then, then I realized maybe we should more treat it like fasting because when you're young, what happens is you, you know, you got high testosterone and shit. Mm -hmm. Even when you're my age, I got crazy high testosterone just from the lifestyle, you know. Mm -hmm. But what I'll do myself is I'll masturbate. I get, I allow myself once a week. Mm -hmm. And that is, and it's fast. And it's only because if I go enough days, I will start to lose sleep. Yeah. So sleep's number one, right? So what I'll do is I'll usually do it and like on maybe like a Saturday, but, it, and, but I don't just do it like some guy where I, you know, get like the porn on and get the fucking lubriderm lotion and and just have this fucking shr like just have this big event yep. you know <laughs> what i'll do what, I, what i'll do is you do it quick like you you just get it out so you just do it as fast like i you actually like if there's people watching that want to try this <laughs> like get your stopwatch and try to jerk off as fast as you can and don't let those old mental pictures of even girls that you've had sex with in the past get in your head <laughs> Like I'll literally just do it. As <laughs> like I'll literally do it as fast as I can. Like if I can do it like 15 seconds, it's perfect. Right? So it's not for fun; it's for utility. Yeah, I just fucking get it out so <laughs> I can get my fucking sleep. Yep, I love it. Yeah, so it's like almost like fasting, right? It's like intermittent jerking off, you could call it or whatever. Yep, you just do it because you got to do it. Exactly, and then and then it's done, and then you sleep good, and then you know you'll. Like based on my, my clock, usually seven days, it's getting like, usually if I can feel it, mm -hmm. like, it's like, fuck, it's like, I'm fucking like, it's just, you get, it's gets so built up that you just gotta like once a week and then you'll just be, so these no fat guys that are grinding, it's almost like those people that do the long fast. I'd rather see them stick to 72s and fucking get there. Yeah. You know? We're here to lose fucking weight and get healthy. I don't give a fuck. It's not a fasting contest. I don't care if you fasted a hundred fucking days, if you're just going to relapse back to your bullshit. Yeah. See, it's the same idea. It's like, I'd rather see them do 72 hour fast consistently count their food and fucking get to their goddamn goal. And it's the same with these no fat guys when they're just grinding out this long period with no masturbation for like 50 60 or however long you know some guys probably made it six months and it's like it it ends up taxing them in a sense like mentally because they're losing sleep some a lot of them right now some of them you know it depends how bad their the testosterone levels are so fucking low now right all these, all these young boys now like the way like with the vegan diet and the fucking all this bullshit their test levels are fucking rock bottom. Like, you know how much easier it is for them not to jerk off? Like, the test levels, if you go back, like, however, like, my dad's generation, the mm -hmm. test levels are through the roof. Yeah. Because he's working stiffs eating meat. And now mm -hmm. it's, like, just video games and all this fucking electronic pollution to your brain and porn and, and vegan diets. And, like, the test levels are fucking low. Yeah. We're just general. We just have like a bunch of pussies. Like you just see it and you see how the young and they're, that's why we're talking about men getting weak. Like, yep. you know, and uh, that's what the problem is. We have the society is full of weak men and they're just not standing up to anything.
And uh, then basically these women are just basically allowed to just run around like fucking children, basically, and be fucking like openly hypergamous as fuck because of this. Yep. You no. Know? So. You've got a video titled Fat Gross Women or a Product of Weak Men. Yeah. It's like, uh, that's kind of what we're talking about. What do you mean yeah. by this? Well, so basically, uh, naturally, women, obviously men are supposed to be feminine. Women are supposed to be masculine. Men are supposed to, men are supposed to be leaders, right? Women aren't leaders. They're not leaders. So as soon as you have no leader in the man, the woman will just go fucking haywire. Right. And, and, and the thing, and coming from like haywire in the way of fucking like just completely destroying her body, like they'll just destroy themselves. It's unbelievable. I see this firsthand. This is why it's probably similar to you. It's funny how your old purpose was like, you know, strength and stuff. And you're probably helping a lot of young guys and you probably started to see the patterns. Mm -hmm. I seen the patterns with weight loss. I see, and it's like, what the fuck are these women becoming? Why are they getting so fucking fat? Right. Like, women are way fatter than men. Like, men are fat. Like, there's some fat men. But the women, it's this, the obesity epidemic amongst the women's fucking disgusting. And plus, fat men can still work a job. Like, some of these women are so fat, they can't even walk. Like, yeah. I've seen a lot of women in those electric go-karts, man. Mm -hmm. And the, what I'm so, the women are a product of weak, the, the, but the fat gross women are a product of weak men because the men aren't standing up right. and they're not putting fucking the women in line. Like a lot of women hate me when I say this shit. It's mm -hmm. like having like, there's like North America needs a dad. Right. Okay. There's no fucking dad. And the man would have been like the dad and, mm -hmm. and the, the little boy would be like their little boy or little girl. The child is like the, the, the woman and mm -hmm. they look to the dad for leadership. But when they have no leadership, you might as well just let that fucking kid go loose in a candy store. And like with women, with, with women, with being able to like use sex to, to attract guys, like, and it's open like this now. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, about open hypergamy versus just hypergamy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, hypergamy is like that idea where, you know, women will tend to like monkey branch and like go for the bigger, better deal. Mm -hmm. But back in the day when, men had some fucking strength that that was kind of behind the scenes happening. It wasn't like now where that agenda, like the, the feminist agenda is making a situation where open hypergamy is basically becoming, uh, becoming what's the word I'm looking for there. It's too like socially accepted. Oh yeah. So like, it's okay for like a woman to go fuck 40 guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, that and that's the problem because then you get single moms, no fucking dad, to nobody calling her a fat fucking pig to keep her in line. Um, she's got these kids. She's her pair bonding mechanisms completely just destroyed because women yeah. aren't like men that way. Men are like men could still like have sex with a lot of women and it won't psychologically fuck them up like that. Porn fucks up men really bad. But having sex with multiple girls won't actually fuck a man up so bad because, you know, that's our whole thing, trying to spread as much seed as we can. Like, that's our, that's our uh, sexual uh, strategy is, like, unlimited access to unlimited women, right? Mm -hmm. Where women, their sexual strategy is open hypergamy. So now you're getting a situation because of feminism, because the legal system's so fucked up and basically it's completely gynocentric towards women. Mm -hmm. Men can't do anything anyway. So when a man actually tries to act masculine in North America, he gets fucking fried over the coals for it. Right. So that's the other problem. So it's like the men up in the higher, higher status men that like make the laws and shit's actually where the problem's got to fucking be st started first. Because like guys like me and you, like we, you know, we can, we can enlighten people on this, but there's always like, say if a guy makes a law up, up, like way up top in the legal system, like if the, if it, maybe if his wife's like some fat feminist, that's going to have a pretty big effect on fucking oh, yeah. if he passes a law or not. Right. Like, right. And, and so that's like the big problem that the women have no leaders and the right. men are, that's the problem. The women have no fucking leaders and 
you know, most, a lot of women will be like, I don't need a man or I fucking, or, you're not a fucking leader. Like, fuck, if you threw fucking a bunch of women on an island by themselves, they'd fucking die in a month, you know, because they would just, they just wouldn't be, they're, they're just not rational enough. They wouldn't be able to take care of themselves. They don't have the skills like men and like, they have skills with other stuff, you know, right. like, you know, they're amazing for having babies and raising babies and, and they calm down situations. Like it's that yin and yang thing. Right. But like, men on an island fuck they'll be building houses and everything with it you know and they get yeah. along better too and i always talk about that with that tribal like men get along they make actually deeper relationships with each other than women do with other women 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 are always trying to cut each other's fucking heads off in competition to get men like i've seen this i've seen where two women are like supposedly best friends and then one woman like talks to you and she's molting off her fucking friend like really badly you know and it's mm -hmm. like her best friend and and women you ever notice they, they won't keep friends as long either not modern day modern day girls will bounce through friends like crazy you know they won't there's no real structure and that's another thing too just going back to people you know with depression and fucking all this unhappiness people don't make any friends anymore because how back in the day you would have been making friends with people you grew up with since you're a little kid. So you got like these yeah. extremely strong bonds, you know, like I got friends I grew up with since I was a kid that I've known these guys for like, you know, 30 years. And I'm just always going to be friends with these guys. Like I could be, I, I wouldn't have to talk to them for 10 years and like I could just show up at their house and walk into their house, <laughs> you know, yeah, but now, funny. you know what I'm saying? Now the, it takes a lot of time to build those relationships which just, doesn't even it's not even given a chance and so this all comes back to fat loss and all the shit because i end up coaching people on half of this shit you know i deal with girls with you know eating disorders on the top end and the bottom end i don't like to call a lot of people when you say eating disorder they're thinking like bulimia and anorexia right. being a fat fucking pig's an eating disorder yeah okay in fact it's worse in fact i'd rather coach if you gave me 20 women i'd rather coach 20 anorexic women and bring them back to good health before I I coach fucking twenty three hundred pound women because those anorexic women they they actually had more discipline, right? Even though psychologically fucked up, they had way more discipline. All I need to do is give them the confidence to like learn to love themselves again and put them through maybe some social, like some social, uh, uh, like I used to do this. I'd take people on the street and like deliberate embarrassment kind of shit, you know, like shit like with my sign. <laughs> You know, maybe yeah. make him wear a sign. Maybe make him wear a sign out in the fucking street that says, fuck, I'm anorexic or something or something that scares the fuck out of them or show their body in public. Right. And, it, and it's amazing how you can cure that really quick. I, I made a joke about how you could cure anorexia. All you do is you throw that anorexic person out in the fucking bush. And I'll, trust me, if they fucking didn't have food long enough, they'd be willing to eat an asshole out of a dead fucking deer in about three years. <laughs> because <laughs> because it, it's, it's this weak society. They're thinking about all this shit. It's just in yeah. their head. And yep. you throw them out in the elements. You throw them out in the fucking elements, and they're, all of a sudden it's like survival mode kicks in. They're not anorexic at all because there's the judgment goes out the window. They're not, they don't give a fuck, right? They're going to die, right? That's how you cure it really quick. Yeah. Hope I'm fucking not talking too much. I'll fucking let you get something in here. I Man, I enjoy I listening to you talk. I enjoy watching your videos. They're like hour long a piece. And when I take my son to jujitsu, I just sit there and I listen to them. I, I resonate deeply with your attitude, the things you talk about, your way of life. So uh, I enjoy your, your, you entertain me and, uh, and educate me, dude. I really enjoy hearing you talk. So keep, you can awesome. keep going. Thank you know what I'd be interested in, in asking you though? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I'd like to know what your mission is in life. Like, what are you up to? What are you doing here? You know what? That's a good question. Because I almost thought you would ask me that. Because <laughs> yeah. sometimes people, when you're helping lots of people, they're like, oh, they're like, oh, you're trying to be a humanitarian. Right. And, <laughs> and it, it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is in this for self-interest. Okay. So originally, like, I get a lot of gratitude. I get a lot of, like, you know, I get those warm and fuzzies when I do help people and I see them lose weight. But in the end, it actually helps my health. It helps me by helping others. Yeah. 
So because I help others with fasting, I do these experiments and then I like to like it, it actually helps me be a better person, which in the end, that actually should be your main goal. It's not so much about trying to help the world become a better place. Okay. Right. It's about being the best version of yourself and, and helping people and having that strong purpose really creates that some even like with yourself you know it's like you even fasting now and see other people are going to copy you and they're going to do it but you were originally doing it for your own for yourself really right you know what i'm saying and like mm -hmm. so there's always in the end i just want to i want to feel good i want to be healthy i want to have i i like i like communicating with people I want to be able to get out of bed and not have any fucking pain. You know, when I'm like 70, Yeah. I want to always be taking risks. I never want to get stagnant in life. I don't want to like be scared. I never want to live in fucking fear ever. Okay. I love triggering people too. I love triggering the fuck out of these wires. <laughs> I guess that's fun for me. You yeah. know, the, best, the best thing that I'm doing right now, like other than working on my own health and such, is when I get these children's fat loss results, man. Man. Those yeah. trigger the fuck out of these fucking war pigs. Like, they can't even, like, these women, they can't, like, they just lose their heads. When I take a kid that's, ten, like, 10 years old, and he loses 30 fucking pounds in three months, the yeah. kid lost 25% of his body weight in three months. And, yeah. like, if a fucking 10-year-old kid can do it, like, what the fuck is wrong with our goddamn society? See, All I right. love and i'm paying these kids eh so i'm paying the parent <laughs> yeah that fuck i gave that kid 500 bucks really yeah i'm paying for it like <laughs> that's what i'm doing because then the fucking system can't fuck with you because uh. i don't charge i don't charge any money the only i make money on youtube which half of my videos are fucking demonetized anyway yeah. i make some money and then i make money on that snake juice when people buy it and i make money on donations on youtube but other than that all my help's been free for the last two and a half years i had no fucking job i actually took a big risk i used to make a lot of money in the oil and gas industry and i fucking threw it to the fucking curb just to do this and i live very very simple and that's another reason i had to live minimalistically i didn't have any fucking money right so these kids though i i know that there's no fucking way that most parents would get their kids fasting. So I use fucking money. Yeah. Because they can't fucking go, they, they're, they, they can't say no to money. Right. Okay. They can't. Now, the problem is the system's so fucked up. Some of these parents, and a lot of the parents who get their kids fasting, obviously they're sending me their pictures too. I just don't want some fucking mom fasting her kid when she's not even doing the goddamn diet. Right. right. So these women are, and dads are already doing it. And so then, yeah, I pay them for the transformation. It's like the rules are, you know, they, they got to lose their gut has to be flat and it can't, they ha can't have any overhand. Right. So that kid you've seen, actually, I want him to actually cut a little bit more, mm -hmm. but he's but pretty close to where he should be. He's pretty young. So like no overhang on the front of the gut, no fucking love handles. That's the rule. And then I get the transformation with the testimonial and I get 500 bucks Canadian. Cause then they can't fuck with you. That's why people hate me. Cause I'm literally yeah. paying people to lose weight I'm, yeah. and everybody else is so greedy. They're like charging. It's like, mm -hmm. what the fuck do I charge for? I'm telling people to stop eating you fat <laughs> pig and drink salt water. Like there's nothing to charge. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're, you're, you're spot on because if anybody wanted to come after you, uh, I guess they, they, they wouldn't have much to grasp onto because you're not charging. And not just that they can't do fucking shit. I thought about this so many times. They'd have to basically put a gun to my head because the way I live my lifestyle, I have so many people I've helped for free. I could live till the day I die with no money. I could fucking live. And I mean, I could live in a nice house with somebody that I've coached all over the world, man. Fuck Hawaii, you name it. It doesn't even matter. I could live till the day I fucking die and have food supplied for me, whatever I need. And I already live such a minimal life. I don't need a bunch of shit. And they, they would have to fucking basically fucking take care of me to stop what I'm doing. They can't stop this. Right? Because like I, I just, when you help people for free for that long, it just comes back to you. And that's where a lot of people don't understand. They always ask me, it's like, I have so many people come to me trying to make money off of me. 
And they're like, oh, I got this marketing idea for you and shit. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Fuck, if you want to take a lesson in marketing, fucking do what I'm doing. I mm. fucking help people for fucking free. And what I, but I, they do pay me. They pay me with their shame. They pay me with those transformation results going on the fucking internet, right? <laughs> but like I've yeah. had people, I, I had a girl one time offer me five grand to coach her for a month but she did not want to put up those pictures. And I'm like, nope. I'm like, nope, keep your fucking five grand. I want your nice. fucking fat ass up in my goddamn group. Because you know what? I learned the hard way. Because yeah. I did charge for about a month, about two and a half years ago, I was charging $500. And the rule was they had to phone me every day because the motivation was getting the results, right? Yeah. So they had to phone me every day. If they missed one phone call, I cut them and kept their money. So... I got some good results, but one girl specifically, there's actually, I have a YouTube about it. She fucked up and she wouldn't phone me. She like was, she was doing so good. Then she went out with her fucking buddies and got drunk and ate a bunch of shit. And I wouldn't like, she just did. She would not phone me. Right. And I'm like, if you don't phone me, we're done. And she fucking didn't phone me because she knew I'd chew her ass out. And that was, mm -hmm. that's what I offer. That's my product. Me yelling at your fucking ass when you fuck up. Yep. And she wouldn't call me because she knew she'd feel like an idiot. And so then the next day, of course she had a fit, you know, she's like, Oh, I'm going to fucking get a lawyer and shit. Cause he gave me 500 bucks. And I'm like, and then I'm not worried about any of that, but like, I don't want this situation. I don't want this girl to have this bad taste in her mouth. And I don't want to keep her five hundred. Like I don't want it to be like that, right? Because that doesn't that doesn't give you a good reputation, right? So I had to think of something where I could still get some value out of this girl and give her her money back. So then I messaged her. I'm like, okay, here's the deal. You got to make me a YouTube video because I wanted to give her some like teach her something. I want to teach her a lesson, like no free ride. I'm just not just giving you your fucking money back, and I'm I'm gonna get something out of this. So I'm like, you make me a YouTube video and you tell everybody how you fuck this up. Mm -hmm. Like a real video of your, like you. And she explained the whole thing on the video, how she fucked it up and how she was in it for straight vanity reasons and all this other shit. And I gave her back her 500 bucks and I got a wicked ass YouTube video out of it. And I called it how I failed the snake diet. Nice. Did you see how I <laughs> rolled that up? Right? Like that was, right. yeah. That's when I stopped. I told myself after that point, I'd never charge anybody ever again for one-on-one -on -one coaching. They can give me donations if they want, and they, but I would never charge because that was the model. That was the business model was just taking that risk and helping people for free and getting the transformation pictures and just having faith that it would just blow up, which is exactly what it was doing. Yeah, clearly. And I want to congratulate you on almost being at 100,000 followers on YouTube, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I peeped it yesterday. Yeah, it was... Go ahead. Yeah, I just say I peeped it yesterday. You were at 99,000 something. So hopefully, uh, you know, those who are watching this video, go subscribe to Cole's channel and hit that, help them hit that six figure mark. Yeah, and if people want to look at a bunch of the transformations, like it's Snake Diet on Facebook, but my business page, they can check stuff out. But Instagram's got me shadow banned. Really? So, How oh, do you know that you're shadow banned? Because I had a whole bunch of people message me, and when they go to search me, I'm not there. So, really? but, so you have to type in my whole name. You have to type in my whole name to basically, if that even shows you my profile, and that's where there's a ton of transformations on that with yeah. stories and even what people were doing. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. I get, I get blocked all the time. Like I've been, I've probably only been on Facebook for six months out of the year. It's fucking bullshit. Like I get blocked for stuff like that's just basically fat loss stuff, you know, just like stuff that you think would just be able to go up. It's yeah, it's really? crazy. Do they give you, know you a reason why? Do you know why Instagram shadow bound you? No, like no. And they, they made me pull, they pulled down a couple of my little video clip posts where I was just ranting. Mm -hmm. like. And, uh, yeah, man, I have issues with social media. You know, yeah. I've been blocked. I've, I've been blocked on YouTube for making live videos, you know, for three months or for three, four months. Wow. Shit. Like, like it's just fucking ridiculous. And like, it's, uh, 
Yeah, there's I, I can't even really post on Facebook now. I got to be very careful on Facebook. Or though, and the thing is, I don't even really care, but I coach a lot of people through Facebook Messenger. So if they oh. block me on Facebook, I can't talk to because I don't text people, right? Like you've seen, like I always send voice memos, right? Like I can't, you like try fucking motivating a fat ass with text. It's like typing it, like stop eating you fat pig in text. Yeah. Like how the fuck's that gonna motivate them? Like you should see, I got women that actually message me and they're just like, yell at me. They're like telling me to yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> hey fatty. They're like, stop eating you fat, disgusting swine. Like, <laughs> they, they like want it. They, they can't get enough of it. It's fucking it. And the people that love me, they get results. Yeah. The people that hate me, they don't get results. Right. You know, it's just like with your, you got actually quite a cult following. I like that mm -hmm. because it's like, so like, like people use that word cult in a bad way, but I, I, anybody that has a good cult following is like actually doing a lot more good because yeah. you got, because you're polarizing, right? Cause I'll tell, I'll, I'll commend you too. Like you had some balls to post my fucking sign on your fucking Facebook page, man. They <laughs> banned it. Oh fuck. I got hate. I got hate. Like I had fucking people messaging me that live in the, my home city, like saying, Oh, if they see me on the street, they're going to fucking like choke me out or fucking. And that's another thing too, about social media, how, Social media lets a lot of opinion, a lot of opinions be heard that shouldn't be fucking heard. Right. Yeah. Like you know, like like shut the fuck up. Like you're in real. If social media didn't exist, a lot of these like, especially these feminist women, a lot of these opinions you wouldn't even hear them. Now these right. opinions actually create a problem. Like some of these women were saying, "Oh, if I seen you, I'd fucking punch you in the face." Yeah. I dare you. Fuck. I'd fucking like. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. some of these women it's getting to the point now like a woman comes up and hits you you better fucking it, you better have a camera there because you'll mm -hmm. you'll like you know you'll go to fucking jail mm -hmm. if you even lay a hand on her right right you know so like it's just people will just talk and talk and what social media is doing is i feel it makes people very angry because mm -hmm. when you you can get like in a little spat over social media with somebody you didn't even know and all of a sudden you'll lose sleep that night over fuck all like that's how bad it's getting where people have that kind of anxiety. Like, fuck, I'm so mad. Like, and I use that. Yeah. Sadly, I use that. I troll the fuck out of people to get my word out. Yeah. But luckily deep down, I know that my word helps people. Yep. Okay. But like a lot of people, they, they'll get hating each, on each other and then they just go to bed angry. Yeah. Like that it, social media just creates hate and it creates a massive amount of, of uh, sociopaths. Mm -hmm. because no one cares about anybody anymore right like you know they don't genuinely care like you see this where now it's getting really bad man where, where you're you got a situation where now you'll have some guy getting beat up in the street and people will just walk past mm -hmm. you know that wouldn't like even i don't know remember that story years ago where that guy got his head chopped off in that bus no there's a story where a guy kind of just lost his, lost his marbles on this bus and he went and grabbed this kid and he literally decapitated the kid in the bus. Oh my God. Yeah. And everybody else, and everybody just basically ran off the bus. Now back when my old, like, fuck, that wouldn't have happened because that's just a complete lack of balls on the society's part. Like to not step into that mm -hmm. because like if there was some people, some men on that bus that actually had, like, you know, some balls that just, they wouldn't have let it happen. There's just no right. fucking way, you know? And that's where it's getting really bad that way. And, and I feel even with the women, Oh, this is a good little topic. Do you follow like any of the transgenders, like winning all these sports at all lately? Yeah. I've seen them in uh, some of the news reports. Well, yeah, well, it's fucking crazy how this feminist ideology and like everybody needs to be equal. Right. You know, it can't be a fucking first and last. Everybody, it all has to be fucking like just sunshine and fucking rainbows. And now what's happening, this is the fucking irony, is because they're letting these transgenders race against these young girls, fuck, they're going to fucking, they're going to just wipe out women from yeah. sports. Right. Congratulations. The, the, the women are the ones that wanted this fucking thing. And now there's, and now the women, like, talk about liberation. They're just going right. to wipe women right out of fucking sports. And because they're too scared to put the cap on the 1% to, to save the 99%. Yeah. 
Right. See, the, the, that's the whole problem with this whole fucking thing is you got like the minority speaks loud right. and they're getting what they want. Like not everybody can be, not everybody can win. Right. And now you're going to have a situation if this keeps going the way it does. They did pull 100% raw. I actually compete in 100% raw powerlifting. This kid, this boy basically beat all the fucking records in the, the one women's weightlift the class. Yep. And they pulled the medals. They actually manned up and pulled the fucking yeah, medals. I saw Which that. I was really glad to see. I'm like, well, fuck. Like, you know, they did it. Because it's getting to the point now where they almost wouldn't pull the medals. Like, I think in Cincinnati, I was reading about there's actually an equality bill or something. And that was the one where it's getting – and that, I think that was the one with the track. Maybe I'm wrong. But two track athletes, both of them won. The other girls knew they were going to win. It's mm -hmm. like, and they're so, and and two girls didn't make it to the next level of competition because these two transgenders basically mopped everything up in the running, right? <laughs> Fucking unreal. Yeah, it it seems like a joke almost. Oh, it is, and then the thing is, they, it is a fucking joke, and like people, <laughs> don't, like they don't see this, right? But it's gonna bite them in the ass so bad. Because eventually, if they if it kept going the way it's gonna, I don't think it will. I think the brakes will get put on this sooner than later. Just because I agree. Of even us having these kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. But if it kept going this way, and this is what happens when you fucking let women into fucking places of power. <laughs> right. Yeah, and it's the and organizations like, and the individuals that got to stand up. Like, look at what happened to the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do they call it? Like, fucking, like, what? Just people scouts now or some shit? <laughs> like, yeah, well, they don't. Not the Boy Scouts, because there are women there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So did they even change the name from boy to something else? I think they call themselves Scouts now. Okay. But it's you good know, to see when people fight back. Like, the, the Mormon church was very involved with the Boy Scouts. I mean, they would send all their boys there. And they pulled out, and that, and that was like the end of the Scouts. Actually, I watched um, one of your videos there when you – what's his name again? He wrote the book Rational Man. Oh, uh, Rolo Tomasi. Yeah, Roland. Yeah, Roland. That's his name. Rolo. Rolo. Yeah, him. Him. Like he's old school pickup guy from like way back, right? Mm -hmm. But he had a good point when he's talking about the religion. See, now when mm -hmm. we're talking about men being leaders and women naturally being, when women are submissive, everyone gets along better. Yeah. <laughs> like as soon as a woman's fighting with a man, it just the man has zero respect for that. Zero. Mm -hmm. You know, but he had a good point talking about the church. Like the old religions would actually keep that hypergamous nature in check. Right. But now there's more women of power in these religious environments, and they're almost going completely away from what the religion was. Like if you if you let that go another ten years, like whatever, all the religions will just be completely rewritten. Right. You know, and that's and that's what's happening and. And religion, that's one good thing about religion was that, you know, mm -hmm. it would keep, religion kept a good family structure. Right. And it was very hard to get a divorce. And now women fought for that divorce, right? Like now they can just get a divorce, like fuck all. But right. here's what the, now the brutal part though is with all this red pill shit. Men are catching on. Some yep. men get red pilled in a bad way. Like I <laughs> yeah. get you know, they'll, they'll help a girl and fucking get a false rape charge, end up in fucking maximum security prison for two months is what happened to this one guy. Yep. It was like an assault charge. He just helped the woman fix her car and did nothing and they had it on camera, yep. you know? And anyway, but the, this is where it gets scary for the women because these guys are getting so red pill that if the men, basically the, 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 the men are getting, the women are burning it down so bad with the men that if the men, like as a whole completely disconnect, then the women are, then there's no one there anymore for the women because technically it's these fucking weak men that are even making feminism possible, right? Right. It's like, interesting how many weak men are the ones that fight back when I make videos uh, that are red pill related. It's usually. Yeah, because, yeah, because they're just pussy addicts and they're fucking trying to fucking, they're just fucking white knight cucks that are kissing these feminist fucking women's asses and yep. because they're trying to get laid it all just right. comes back to them trying to get fucking laid and the funniest part is these women don't want those guys these women right. want an alpha male that's got a set of balls they don't want that guy you know that right. guy's just fucking he's just gonna be like this orbiting guy just orbiting around he ain't gonna get nothing you know and 
And these guys will learn the hard way because then the, that exact guy that thinks he's doing all this great shit for these women that are basically just stomping all over him, he's going to get fucked and he's going to learn his lesson the hard way. Right. The real hard way. And it you sucks know, and for that's women. Why, go ahead. Uh, so what do you think about MGTOW? I mean, you seem like a monk. I know you're, you're a minimalist in many different ways. <laughs> Uh, you, well, you seem like a MGTOW kind of guy. Well, what happened, see, uh, one thing about MGTOW is as soon as you put a label on somebody, I don't really like that because a lot mm. of MGTOW guys are just kind of in a state where they're just kind of hating on women right mm. now and they aren't really like, like, you see, a real, a guy that's really red-pilled is still going to, like, not, he's not going to hate women. He's still right. going to love He's still going to love women for what they are. He's just going to understand their nature. He's going to understand that like, a, like they're not just fucking the princess off of fucking a Disney movie. Right. You know, he, that's the thing. So a lot of these, when you throw that MGTOW label on there, there's a lot of MGTOW guys that are like, basically like some of these MGTOW guys say, they're like literally one blowjob away from going back to the fucking plantation. Like, it's like, it's like they're actually trying to go MGTOW to still get laid. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you know, yeah it's like they, they're like oh if i go migtel then these women will see that i don't want them and and the, so they're very close to just going back mm. to being whipped so like me this i didn't this just happened with purpose because you know i was like a little whore for quite a while and fucking you know really learned human nature i was in the whole pickup thing i used to actually fucking teach it in fact Wow. I was, and I was doing it with old ladies too. I was taking old women out to meet men and everything. It was crazy. <laughs> they were paying me. I was pretending I was their fucking nephew and shit. And we'd go to Canadian Tire and I'd go chat up some fucking old guy for like a woman that I was with and like just fucking like hook him up like and get him off the internet <laughs> dating scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, I got into this because um, I, I got so passionate about my health and just the fasting and what truly happened is I just kind of forgot about sex Yeah, because it wasn't giving me anything before that. Cause all the girls that I was with, it was like, they, like I was way more developed than all of them. And it was like, they were just like, I might as well have been fucking a pocket pussy because <laughs> after I had sex with them, I, I just didn't even, there was nothing there. Right. There's no value. They weren't giving me any value. Mm -hmm. And then, I remembered like the last girl I actually had sex with. I was so upset afterwards because it was like, it was like so worthless. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was a sexual act. It was because of me. It was like, I just didn't need it to get my rocks off. And afterwards it was just, there was nothing there. Right. And it really upset me because I was in that state where I was just going through girls for quite a while. Right. And it's just fucking so toxic. And then as I got more into this and helping people with weight loss and, I just forgot about it. And then what happened, I, a year went by, and I didn't even notice it. And I'm like, holy fuck, I haven't had sex in like a year. Now it's been over two years. You know? And, I, and honestly, now that I'm so red-pilled, like, fuck. I, I, and the thing is, it makes me a very good coach. Right. Because I'm not addicted to pussy. So I, can, I have some very attractive women that I coach. Right. Where most guys wouldn't even be able to handle that. They'd be like fucking hitting on that girl. They wouldn't be fucking yelling at her and telling her that she's got fat here and fat there and she needs to do this. And, and like you're talking to these attractive women about their bowel movements and all this fucking shit. Yep. That's what makes me such a good coach is because at this point, I, I didn't force celibacy. It just sort of happened because my passion got so high. Right. And that's it. And then, so now as far as the future with me and women, like, I know that I'll, any girl that I'd ever meet that would come into my life period is going to be a girl that I've coached. She's going to be a girl that leads the exact same lifestyle as me right. or else I'm not going to be attracted to her. Like if she drinks alcohol, does drugs, doesn't fast, you know, if she doesn't do all this shit, I'm just, she's not going to compliment my life. She's not going to make me a better person. And like, you know, it's even like women hate this, but like, you know, a traditional woman actually, they know how to cook. Like yeah. that would compliment, that would compliment my life if I didn't have to go to the grocery store and she did that for me. And then she made me dinner and fucking, and then I, and then the trade-off is obviously she wants a masculinity in her life and fucking right. maybe I'm helping her with weight loss. Then that saves me time. 
Mm -hmm. And that's some, but I don't give a fuck if a girl is making a half a million dollars a year. I don't give a shit about that. I want some, like as as a man, I need her to have some, something that's going to make me a better person, which would be things like giving, making my life less stressful, like handling some of the errands and shit so I can sleep better. You know, not taking away from my fucking sleep, not making me lose sleep at night because she's off at the fucking bar gallivanting around, chatting up fucking 20 other fucking guys. Right. You know, I want my health to be better. So that's what I'm always thinking about. It's like, how can I make my health better? And that the the woman that's going to make my health better is going to be a very traditional woman. And, And as far as because of the legal system and because the court system caters to women so bad in North America. Mm-hmm. Like you've been, you've been, you're married and you've been married for, for like, since you were a kid, eh? Or your wife yeah. is young, right? Yeah. We started dating since we were 14. See, that's cool. Yeah. Traditional. We have a traditional marriage. She's a traditional wife. See, that's awesome. And like, the thing is in, in North America now, like that doesn't exist. In yeah. fact, any guy right now that's getting married in 2019, to a woman in North America, 99% of the time, that guy is a fucking lunatic to even yeah. engage in that contract. There's yeah. nothing in it for him. You'd have to move overseas or somewhere if you were looking for a traditional woman. Yeah. And the main thing is, like, I like kids. There's no doubt. I do like kids. Yep. And I probably have kids. Problem is, they can take my fucking kids away from me. Yep. Because isn't that what kids, isn't that what it's all about to have kids, to be a good parent? to raise your kids so they love you so that when you get fucking old, your kids will take care of you. It's like the best investment you could ever make. But if the woman can just fucking be like, bye, and just take your fucking kids, right. then it's useless because that's the only reason I would ever engage with a woman in a long-term relationship is basically to still have kids. Right. But if, but if she can just take them away, then it's pointless. And because mm-hmm. I've beaten sex. Yeah. Like I, I go the rest of my life and not have sex ever again. I've beaten mm-hmm. that. Nice. There's other things value though like you said if they can somehow give value back and that's why when you're an extremely developed male and your past looks and you have a traditional wife and like i've already not had sex for two years so if i had a woman in my life that i wasn't even having sex with it was completing some of those roles that i said might better my life then that would be a very good thing yeah right so then that make that makes a situation where if you if your wife does get old and loses her loses her looks and like her youth and beauty if she can still give you those 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 things that are going to make your life better right. like lowering your stress level that woman's got value yep you know where now if it's just about sex and like that's the thing like men have objectified women so fucking bad instagram right. instagram's the biggest fucking shit show on the goddamn planet right now young girls you know you throw up one picture of skin if you're a young girl you got fucking 20 million cocks hitting you in the face for days yep you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. women, and that's another thing about women. They can't control that. No, they can't control it. I, and I agree with you that it's up to men. We, we have to take our power back by not needing the sex. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And it, it, it takes a lot of work. And, and it's very hard if you don't have a passion. Like if you're practicing no fap or celibacy, if you don't have a real passion on the side, like, even you, you're, you're, you know, like it really, when you, you made a MGTOW video quite a while ago and I seen that and I was like, fuck, he's fucking getting red pilled like this. And then my buddy that I mentor, my little buddy, he's seen that video and he's like, fuck, Elliot might get a hold of you one of these days to fucking do a talk. Yeah. Well, here we I've are. Been following, I've been following you since you had like, I'm pretty sure you had less than 50,000 subscribers. Wow. Yeah. I'm an OG yeah. man. Like way back, I used to work in a gas plant, work in shift work, and I'd watch because you were one of the main fit. You're pretty much one of the only fitness guys, really, back then. One of the main fitness guys, and and you were, and I'd watch your videos at night. And that's actually back then I was watching some pickup videos and shit too, like way back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, actually, there's one video I still use of yours. It was an old deadlift tutorial where you had the broomstick along the person's back. You wanted to touch their head there shoulder blades and they're basically their fucking tailbone and that's yeah. that's the best I, that's a, a excellent setup and i remember that was, that was like the way because dead everyone fucks up that deadlift right yeah that was a really good fucking video simple <laughs> as shit so you fucking deadlift right <laughs> yeah 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 thanks man yeah most a lot of people still refer to that so but yeah yeah like you're saying a hundred thousand subscribers it kind of for you it just kind of blew up after a while and 
you handle mm-hmm. the hate really good. You know, you handle the hate and that's why you're special compared to a lot of people because even me, that's probably my almost like my superpower is that I can handle the worst hate. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like these women, when I put that sign out in the street, like I had radio stations even bringing me up fucking in my home city and shit. And, you know, I there's gyms that I can't go to now and fucking like. Really? <laughs> oh, fuck. I had, I had, but I've had guys come up to me because I had a friend sneak me into one of the gyms because he works there and the one manager wasn't there and she banned me. And there was two guys in there this one afternoon and fuck, they come up to me like, you're that guy with the sign and you're on YouTube. And they're like, you gotta get, we gotta get our picture with you, man. And they're like, snap your pictures and shit. That's wild. Like, you know, it's fucking, yeah. Like I'm living with a Muslim family right now, actually. Mm-hmm. yeah my buddy's muslim and like his wife's amazing you know mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. a very it's such a family oriented situation where mm-hmm. most everybody lives in one house like i love the feeling yeah. of living you know i love that mm-hmm. and, I agree. yeah like we miss that everyone has to move out their own mm-hmm. and and don't get me wrong though as a young man you should be getting the fuck out to build some <laughs> character yeah for sure right? but back in the day it would have been like farmers you know, the, the young boy would have grew up in the farm and he would have kind of took over the farm from the dad as the dad got older, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we just don't have none of that anymore. And population's a big thing. Like even with the female hypergamy with the internet, it's the worst thing in the world for women, man. Because like mm-hmm. I said, they just, they get so much sex offered to them that they're like children in a candy store. Like, don't get me wrong, women or men would be similar, but... We never will be like that because it's not in the nature for women to just throw themselves at or throw themselves at men. Men always have to work a little bit. Right. Like I think, I think there was a guy that made a video said, "Women are born, men are made." Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so Rolo like, says that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And then there's yeah, it probably came from him actually. It was probably one of his like followers and made a video mention it. But like, it's true. You know, if a woman has her youth and beauty, that's all she needs. Okay. Uh, a guy has to go through shit. Like you got your boy doing jujitsu and things like that. Like I boxed my whole life. My boxing coach was fucking hardcore. Like mm. he was like Mickey off of the Rocky movies, man. <laughs> yeah. He was an old Frenchman and he actually died of cancer when I was, I think I was 20 and I fought for him or no, I was 26 and I fought one last time, but I kind of took a hiatus for like about six years. I didn't compete, but he, uh, like when I was a kid, guess what? This was actually funny because I looked back and it dawned on me one day. Boxing was free. He, they, the boxing club, he built the boxing ring and they used to rent it out on the weekends to like other fights and shit. Mm. And he made like, and that, and that money supported the club. And the only kids that had to pay were kids that were competing when I was younger. And it was $50 a year. And anybody could come in, like anybody. And usually, and, but the, because it was free, guess what? What do you think he could do because boxing club is free? What do you th- how do you think he could act? Yeah, he could be a tough coach. He could be a brick. And yep. he's like, get to work. He's like fucking some 10-year-old. He's like, get to work. Like, and the, if, the, if the parent came in and bitch, he's like, well, just be they're like, fuck, get the fuck out of here. I don't need like, you. Here for free. So our boxing club is tough as nails. Like I when like I was that. a kid, every person in that club was fucking tough as nails. And that is why, because he didn't charge. It was like, he just loved the kids. He was just like, like, just like I say, he would have been like on the, one of them old Rocky movies, like even Apollo Creed, when he had his club, it was just all the black guys in the club. Same thing. It was just like tough as fucking nails, yep. you know? And, and that just doesn't exist now because you're paying for this shit because everyone mm-hmm. wants money. And yeah, we had a wicked club. Our club, we won all the time. Like every time we went to tournaments, our guy, our, our kids won you know and he was this old frenchman and he was just fucking he's an old farmer and he was just fucking tough like yeah yeah. even when he finally died like he had he got stomach cancer and uh he was like i think he was getting close to 90 and he just fuck he didn't go to the hospital fuck all he just died you know (laughs) he just fucking (laughs) took it and died yeah you know what i mean he wasn't gonna fuck with these fucking people right like (laughs) You know, it's upsetting how many people get brainwashed into the, into the healthcare system. And that's another right. big problem I have. Like these, these people are just like tax, like your tax dollars and like 
all this shit in the States, like the amount of money that goes to these fucking fat, you know, like all, honestly, a lot of these fat middle-aged people and some of the older people too, they just take your dollars, just go to sh go to shit because it's like the healthcare system doesn't create any help. Right. So, so people go and get their meds and shit and, and also the what's oh fuck there's a system in the states that like basically works like welfare and like you pay a ton of tax into that and people yeah, get medicaid. all the free what is it called medicaid medicare yeah something like that like that kind of shit like people are just have it so easy that they don't got to mm -hmm. do anything you know and it just and it just taxes the shit out of the people that are working class you know mm -hmm. it's just and that's why that's why guys like trump got voted in Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I knew Trump was going to win that election before it fucking even happened. Anybody that didn't see it, because if you look behind the scenes and you're watching some of the guys on YouTube and you've seen the crowd showing up to see Trump, no matter what yeah. was happening, on, you know, no matter what was happening on mainstream media, I'm like, Trump's going to fucking mop this. Like, he's going to win. <laughs> yeah. You know? And like, like it, uh, fuck, like that's what, and Trump, you want to talk about a cult following? Yeah. Half of the United States is Trump's cult. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like a 50 50 split, right? And like, you can't even go out in public wearing like a mega hat. Like, I got a mega hat. I might wear it on a YouTube one night. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was going to scratch out the fucking grate and mm -hmm. say, make America. And I was going to put some masking tape on there and put sexy again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. But yeah, like, I learned a lot from Trump. Yep. Like, the way he handled people, the way he yeah. just keeps dumbs it down keeps it simple fucking they throw everything at him like remember when that woman came out and tried to like accuse him of rape mm -hmm. and trump was like he said she wouldn't have been my first choice <laughs> <laughs> yep like trump's a fucking boss and, like people yeah. just, that's like he's like he's like trying to be dad you know <laughs> yep yeah, I love it, man. I really enjoy him. He taught me a lot, too, just watching the way he performs, man. Exactly. He just never, he always keeps it just, he always sticks to his main points. You know, the main points. Like, he's fucking, yeah, he's fucking unreal. Like, you learn so much from Trump, the way he marketed himself. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, and create that polarization, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, man, like, I, uh, I help, yeah, I help a lot of fat people, that's for sure. And I'm going to be continuing on and, and uh, I really do want to attack the childhood obesity epidemic, though. That's my main goal. I'm yeah, just, and also, I help so many, I coach so many people over voice memo now via, like, Instagram. And I'm probably going to try doing, like, a massive group coaching thing just on YouTube Live. Wow. Mm -hmm. So instead of, like, just to use my time better, maybe, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I was thinking maybe do one whole hour every night where I just do a Q&A every night just to give people the motivation every night. And then it saves me talking all day to the just one-on-ones there's a lot of people that i help one-on-one -on -one. once they do put up accountability pictures and shit they go mia a lot right like yeah i people look at my instagram and they see these, this crazy amount of results but honestly that should be like a thousand for the amount of time i put in so i gotta use my time a little bit better and i might just start using youtube as this massive coaching platform where i just like talk for an hour every single night so when people are doing like a long fast they'll always look forward to this one hour talk every night to keep yeah. them going you know? i think that's a great idea i know that when i was doing my 10 day fast i would listen to your your uh videos also and they totally yeah. motivated and focused yeah like I've, I've done that too like on you know long dry fast but there's not many people to listen to really is there on youtube when you're doing the long fast like mm -hmm. there's some people that like, you know, not many people that have done like some really nasty dry fast. Right. But like, I would do the same. Like, you know, try to like keep motivated. And just a lot of times, you know, what's funny about fasting? Every time I've done a long fast, I've always like learned something. Yep. I always had like an epiphany because bringing yourself back to this complete state of minimalism where like you want nothing, especially if it's a dry fast. And you start to think about like the crazy, like you get so tough because you're almost like kind of pushing death in a sense. Yeah. That's what people, people are scared of death. Mm -hmm. Okay. People are fucking scared shitless of death. And if you can, everyone's going to be scared to some extent. Like I'm still scared to some extent, but I'm a lot stronger than most. And that makes me push my comfort zone really hard with some of the shit that I do. And fasting always keeps you kind of on that ragged edge where it just keeps you like always tough. And like yeah. even, you know, even sleeping on the floor. 
even having that cold shower, even drinking piss. Like I fucking done urine therapy because you know I I've done I did I did the first time I ever drank piss. I did that because I was I got reading about cancer, and then urine therapy came up on Google, and then I started reading these anecdotal stories about urine therapy. And then, of course, I'm like, okay, well, I can't be a pussy. I got to at least try this. Right. And I remember driving home the one night from the gym. I just got tra done training people. And I was like, I guess I'm going to try this. Right. And it wasn't, I wasn't scared to drink the urine. It, what scared me was when I looked in the mirror, I was like, how far am I going nuts? Like, you know, like, am Start I getting, questioning yourself? Is huh? it, yeah. Is it getting, am I getting too crazy? Is this too radical? Yeah, because there wasn't very many people doing urine therapy at all at the at the time when I started doing it, and it kind of got I made it a little more mainstream because it fucking it's unreal for your skin, man. It's unfucking believable for a lot of things, and especially once you research what your your kidneys actually do, how they're just basically elect your kidneys essentially are just mineral regulators. Your your urine's clean, mm -hmm. right? They're, your kidneys just regulate. Your liver cleans all the toxins. That's what people don't understand. They think that urine is like fucking toxic. No. There's information in your urine. If you've been smoking dope or something like that, there's information like micro on a micro level, but that's really nothing. It's your urine is just clean electrolyte. And I used to use urine to actually be able to tell where my salt levels were at. I just taste it and I could tell where I was on sodium and potassium. And I, it was almost clockwork. If I started to feel kind of like winded, if I was on a longer fast and I felt like I was getting kind of gassed, I could, I'd be, I'd taste my urine and it would just like confirm what I already knew. I'd be like, and then I taste the urine if it kind of tasted flat, like there wasn't enough potassium or sodium, then I just crank the snake juice up. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Dude, you can learn a lot. Yeah, like I fucking maybe I should just start a fucking business where I'm just a piss taster. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's like, hey, I'll fucking taste your piss. I'll tell you how much salt you got in your fucking system. Amazing. Dude, this has been this has been an amazing conversation, bro. I, I didn't expect us to go where we went, but I'm happy that we did. Especially, you know, we started out talking about fasting. We went into the red pill. Now we're talking about drinking piss. You're an amazing dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, hey, like so I want to invite everybody that's watching to, uh, to, of course, check out Cole's YouTube uh, go, and, and help him get out of the shadow ban jail on Instagram by searching snake diet wizard right on yeah. instagram and yeah, snake, uh, follow him there snake underscore, snake underscore diet underscore wizard i believe if you type the whole thing i will pop up yeah very cool let's get him to a hundred thousand subscribers cole i gotta run i got another call at one but i want to thank you man thank you so much for all the work you do and thank you for taking time out today to be here with me well thank you very much elliot for having me it was fun you got it brother enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk soon man you too i'll talk to you later buddy bye